Hey everybody, it's episode 336 of PodQuest. Hey. Hey. It's Wednesday, January 27th, 2021. I am Chris. With me is Druton. Hello. And Walnut. Hi. And I got the year right that time. Yes, you did. Good job. It only <laughs> took you three weeks. I think last week was the only one that I got wrong. But I, I don't know. I, I could have got, I think Drew, Drew, you missed the, the two weeks before that. So I very well could have gotten it wrong and Richie just didn't catch it. It's possible. You think I listened to you? I mean, I know I don't listen to you. I space the fuck out when you start talking about Monster Hunter and D&D and shit. Exactly. <laughs> I generally space out during the intro. I mean, honestly, that's that's why, like, at the the next day, I always send you messages asking you about Godzilla stuff, because I just forget everything that you've said. Yeah, I know. Actually, it's just hard to keep track of some of that stuff. Dude, it's hard to keep track, and I'm watching it. There's just, there's too much, there's too many monsters, there's too many names. Why can't it just be, like, Godzilla 1, Godzilla 2, Godzilla 3... Godzilla, I, Godzilla harder. I mean, there's actually not that many monsters. In, well, in Destroy All Monsters, they introduced three monsters that never had a reintroduction in any of this, in any of that era, and have never been in any other movie since. But I just, I, I mean, they do reuse stuff a lot, but I just meant, like, trying to keep track of, like, Godzilla versus this one, Godzilla versus that one, Godzilla versus himself. Well, well, yeah. I mean, the funny thing is, I'm I'm in the the new era, uh, and in four movies, I'm watching uh, Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla two, which is, not, as far as I know, not a direct sequel to Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla because Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla's direct sequel was the Terror of Mecha Godzilla. But instead of them doing a new name fifteen years after Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla, or just calling it Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla. They called it Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla two. That that is stupid, <laughs> especially because it's so insane. that that was the two different eras though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 first era, the show, the Showa era. I can't remember right now, and I don't have it opened up. But the first era ended with Terror of Mecha Godzilla, which was the second Mecha Godzilla film, and yeah. then this current era that I'm in, which I believe is the Showa era. I think it's the Hesai, the Showa, the Millennium, and then. There's the Netflix era or whatever the next one is that I don't remember. Um, the the show era, which is this current one, has one I believe one Mecha Godzilla film, and it's called Godzilla vs Mecha Godzilla Two, and it's literally fifteen years, if not more, since the release of Godzilla vs Mecha Godzilla. And that's funny because the thing I was reading, I guess it was last Thursday when I was um looking up to see what the next movie was, um to put into the the show notes, um it was saying that. Starting with the the new like the era that you're about to or that you just started this week, mm-hmm. um, that that movie was a direct sequel to the original 1954 Godzilla, and it creates like a new continuity that is actually a continuity from like movie to movie. For them to then have a movie that's just like, oh yeah, no, this is a sequel to one from the previous era that we actually cut out before. Yeah, I mean, we can get further into it later on, or we can just move all that segment up to here. Now nah, we'll um, talk about it at the end. But but uh, as a co- direct comment to that, um, maybe it's like they reference a Godzilla attacked thirty years ago, and you and like your parents died in the Godzilla attack thirty years ago, which was the nineteen fifty four Godzilla. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's just a direct sequel from that one, because in that one he was disintegrated to bone, so there can't really be an official direct sequel because like Godzilla. To uh, Godzilla raids again. Just had a new uh, Godzilla. Oh, okay. Yeah. So maybe I don't know. We'll talk about it later. That's a teaser for you, listeners. <laughs> um, how you guys doing though? Doing all right. You know, tired. I, I I played Rank Fit yesterday, and I'm still dieting. So I'm just like constantly tired. That's not good. You should uh, you should work on that. I was woken up at like five o'clock this morning. Just by, like, some strange high-pitched noises coming from outside. I have no idea what the fuck it was. Probably, like, a belt slipping or something. But, like, that woke me up and, like, threw off my, threw off my entire sleep schedule. So, yeah. I've just been continually tired all day. Yeah, that just seems like a bad time. Yeah. Um, well, I, I have some personal exciting news. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, um, I managed to, uh, get a, an order in for a PS5. Psh, that's last year's model. Well, I mean, technically, it's this year's model because it was manufactured <laughs> this year. So, fuck oh, you, mine's no, newer. I mean, 
but it's like it came out last year. See what I was, I mean, yeah, but you said last like, year's model. Well, I more so meant that's last year's news. Like we we've had that already. I mean, come on, you're not special. Let's be real though; it is still news because those things are still fucking impossible to get. Yeah, I saw uh one site report. I can't remember what it was. Report that uh bots and um scalpers bought the bought the stock of the PS5 for from like I believe Walmart or Best Buy before they even announced that they had stock. Yeah, no, that sounds that sounds pretty accurate for for how this has all been going. It's been an absolute shit show. Mm-hmm. Um the I I want to say it was last Friday. It was the 21st if I remember correctly. I just don't remember what the 21st actually was. Um last Thursday. So last mm-hmm. Thursday, um a bunch of retailers had them go up. And at one point, I saw Wario64 tweet out that Walmart was going to have them at 3 p.m. Because Walmart, as shitty as, they, as they've been with a lot of things, they've been putting up when the consoles would, like, the day of, they put up, like, on the, the page for, like, the PS5 and Xboxes, we will have consoles at X time. Um, so you, you at least know what time they're going to go up, so you don't have to just sit there and refresh the page and hope to find it. Um, so it was at 3 o'clock, so I, like, I, I loaded up the app, I went to the, the PS5 page on the app, and at like 2:59, I refreshed it a few times, and then it suddenly started saying PS5s would be available at 3:10. And so I just sat there and like I refreshed it a few more times, and all of a sudden they went in stock. So I just immediately like rushed through the checkout because I had like I had I had saved all of my info in there so that if I got one, I wouldn't have to worry about like entering a credit card number and like not getting the sale because it would sell out while I was entering that. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it just it it worked. And it, it, I got the confirmation email, and then I waited a few days before I was actually, like, expecting it, because Walmart has had to cancel quite a few of these orders because they basically oversold them. Mm-hmm. Um, but then on Sunday, I got, like, the um, like the shipment confirmation. Nice. nice. Yeah, so it is currently scheduled to be here on Friday at some point. Um, it's going in, like, it, it started in California. And it has since gone through two different FedEx places in California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and now it's actually in Arkansas. Mm-hmm. And it's like, isn't there like a more direct way to get packages from like one coast to the other? I I mean, they could have flown it, but uh, it, it also depends on like the central hubs. Like I, when when I would FedEx packets out for when I sent things to different counties in Florida they would go to Minnesota first because that's what the overnight directs to via FedEx. It goes to Minnesota and then flies down to Florida. See, that's fucking weird, isn't it? It, <laughs> it is. My copy, or my my console, if I remember correctly, when because I, I was tracking it, started in Ewing, New Jersey. Oh, I believe Ewing, or may, maybe Trenton, and then went up north to Ewing, and then back down to uh, Lansdale, Pennsylvania, and then here. I remember you saying that you had a bunch of weird tracking on yours. Yeah. But yeah, it's, f- it's fucking weird. It, it's ship, ship tracking is, is weird, but like it, it, it more so is the not even like the mo- most effective way to ship your thing. It's the most cost effective way to ship everything that's going to a certain area. So yeah, mm-hmm. which does make sense. Yeah. It's just such a weird route. Like when you look at it on a map. Because, like, it yeah. kind of, like, goes south and then dip, like, it kind of makes, like, a U-shape. Like, from, like, Southern California down into, like, Texas and then yeah. back up. Yeah. And, I mean, who knows if it's even going to go directly up from here or if it'll, like, double back or go south again or something weird. I mean, who, yeah, there might be, like, a central hub in Texas where then it'll fly straight to Philly. Or, y- y- yeah, like you said, you never know. It might, like, skip its way up. But you said uh, it should be here Friday? Yeah, and luckily, like, it, like the FedEx page actually shows, like, scheduled delivery for Friday, mm-hmm. which is usually pretty accurate. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, that's why the original date on the Walmart site was arrival by February 6th. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So. I'll take the I'll take Friday over February 6th anytime. Yeah. So, if it's in Texas now, they should have a direct overnight route to, like. Well, it, it's actually in Arizona now, oh. as of, like, a couple hours ago, after, then, I, after I typed it up on the um, outline. Then, yeah, it should be. They should have a direct route tonight. Pro- Actually, did I say Arizona again? I meant Arkansas. I was going to say, it, it, the last you said was Arkansas. So yeah. it's probably yeah, it's going a- from there to Memphis, which is where FedEx's yeah. main hub is, and then getting on the plane at that point. Yeah, it that makes should, sense. should be in, like, PA tomorrow night, and then you should get it Friday. 
yeah, I'm assuming like early Friday morning I will see the in a truck from Barrington message on the page. Yeah, or 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 Lansdale, <laughs> like like so, I said, but yeah, like but... that was driving shipping, and if it's flight, then yeah, it might be. I don't really. Yeah, no, it would probably be Pennsylvania. I don't know. Yeah, most of our most stuff that I get delivered that comes through FedEx, um, the final place before it's out for delivery is the Barrington yeah. Center. Yeah, like I just got um a, a Lego set earlier today that came from FedEx and it left from the Barrington Center after coming from like Chicago or something like that. <laughs> Nerd Legos. Hey man, it's it's the Razor Crest, the Mandalorian ship. It's pretty cool. It's like a thousand pieces. I know. As I sit here looking at my t- uh, two Lego sets on my desk, I know Legos are fun. Uh, yeah, they can <laughs> they can be. That Lego show is fantastic, and I hope they bring it back. Lego show? Yeah. Um, it was it was like a reality. It one of those uh, reality competition shows. <laughs> right. Uh, it was it was uh hosted by um. He did the voice of Batman in the Lego movies, uh, Will Arnett, right? Oh, yeah. right. I do remember this. Yeah. It was so good. So I actually good. don't think I ever watched it, though. I don't uh, know why. It, I mean, it was, it's, it's a reality show. So, like, I, I went, it's like a reality competition show. So, and it was on Fox. It wasn't on, like, Netflix or something. But that's, like, right up my alley is it, yeah. something with Will Arnett and Legos. That's great. Yeah. Honestly, it might still be on Hulu. Yeah, I might be able to watch it all on Hulu. Did it have Lego in the title? Uh, I think so. I don't remember. Yes, it's called Lego, Lego Masters. Masters. Okay, and yeah. it is on Hulu. Yeah, that's. Oh, I mean, that's how episodes. I watched. That's how I watched it because I watched it the day after it would air, or I would usually sit down on Saturday and watch just because it's it would be like my Saturday morning cartoon type. Of. Yeah. Also, I didn't realize that that was a year ago. Jesus. Hmm. Um. Anyway, like actual things that that are going on. Um, Vicarious Visions, the, the, the development studio that's done a whole bunch of video games, um, they're owned by Activision and they were just folded into Blizzard. So they're now going to work on Blizzard IPs, which means we're not going to get any more good content for Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Uh, I mean, not necessarily, but not likely anytime soon. Uh, We're not going to get it from them. Not necessarily. Unless unless they get removed from Blizzard for some reason. I, I mean, or there's just also a Blizzard logo on the front of a Tony Hawk game. Yeah. I, I doubt that. You know Blizzard. Like, Blizzard does Blizzard things. Oh, at, but at this point, Blizzard is just Activision. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I guess that's true. It's honestly more likely for just Blizzard shit to get thrown on to everything else. Like, yeah. it's Activision. It's not like they got sold from Activision to Blizzard. Like, it's all just Activision. Yeah, but if they're working on, like, Blizzard properties and they actually do a good job with it, I don't see them getting taken off of those because Blizzard games still do sell really, really well. That they do. Um, But yeah, so just in case people don't know Vicarious Visions, um, they did this year's Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 Plus 2. They also did the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Uh, They did most of the Skylander games, if not all of them. Um, I don't... There were a lot of them, and I don't know... If they were on all of them, they did some work on the 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 Destiny Two uh, PC version. Um, a lot of licensed games over the years, or like ports of games to like different platforms. Uh, but they also did Tony Hawk Two on the GBA, which was a very good Tony Hawk game, from what I hear. Mm-hmm. I never played like, it. Neither did I, but I I saw it. Uh, Giant Bomb did it once, like on a stream, and like to take a game like Tony Hawk and put it on a GBA, like they did it right. Mm-hmm. They they made an isometric Tony Hawk game work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. On that tiny ass little screen. Oh nice. yes, yeah. Oh, they also did the PlayStation One Spider Man game. What? No, this was never soft. Why are they listed on here as doing Spider Man? Oh, they did the Game Boy Color port of the PS One Spider Man game. Okay, that makes sense. I'm like, I thought that was a never soft game because it had the fucking eye. But yeah, the, so um, the rumor is with Vicarious Visions that they are going to be working on the Diablo 2 uh, remake, remaster, whatever they're pitching it as. Mm-hmm. Which, like, honestly, like, these guys are pretty good at, at remaking games, um, judging by the, their last two games. Yeah, they're, so, it, it seems like, yeah, it seems like they, they made this move because it's like, oh, they're they're good at updating shit, so let's just have them update something that people love into potentially something else that people love. Um, yeah, and I know. I know they, the last couple of Blizzard things didn't go over well, real well. Because what did they? They announced like that Diablo mobile game. Did that ever come out? 
no, it's still in process of coming in. And I know the the Warcraft 3 Reforged apparently is not good. Yeah, people did not like that at all. So they're probably looking at it as like, okay, well, these guys made people want to play Crash Bandicoot again. And then they made people want to play Tony Hawk again. Maybe they'll make people want to keep playing Diablo. Because really, the people that play Diablo are still fucking playing Diablo. Yeah, I mean... Like, yeah. I'm sure the Diablo 2 servers are still fairly active. Yes, they are. As someone who played some Diablo 2 last year. I was going to say, like, when was the last time you played, like, Diablo 2 or 3, like, last week? Uh, it's been a little bit longer than that, but I went through a run late last year where I was like, you know what, I'm going to play some Diablo 2. And, like, they probably have scaled back on the amount of servers they have, and also kind of have stopped giving a shit about bots, because, like, there were times where they had to put in a queue to make games, because there are bots that just make games that auto run you through usually kind of the last few boss fights as they're trying to just spam for magic items that they then resell on websites that's insane to me that like diablo and you're talking diablo 2 still right not diablo, yeah, diablo 2 like people are still playing that game to this day that much that there will be bots dedicated to running to get magic items just so they can sell on the nerd black market illegally somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like, this game, what is it? Like, I feel like, I, I know this is, it's not, but I feel like it's like 30 years old. No, it's like... Uh, it's 21. It's 20. Yeah. A 21-year-old game. It's, it blows my mind. Like, it, I don't know, this just blows my mind. Yeah, I always forget that Diablo 2 actually did come out in 2000. Like, for some reason, like, in my mind... It came out in, like, 99, and then Lords of Destruction came out in 2000. But it's yeah. really 2000 and 2001, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. So, this year is the 20th anniversary of Lord of Destruction. I guess it makes sense to put out a remake. But also, like, Diablo 4 is happening. Does that mean Diablo 4 is not a 2021 product? A hundred percent. I mean, we, we never had a date for Diablo 1, did we? Or Diablo 4? No, but... There's but been heavy speculation it's going to be this year. Let's look, let's look, look at the timeline. Diablo 3 was announced in 2008, released in 2012. Diablo 4 officially announced in 2019. So we're looking at really 2023. Only announced two years ago? Yeah. I mean, not even really two well, years ago, like a like year and a half and ago. Half. Yeah, it feels like longer, doesn't it? That's what 2020 did to us. <laughs> it sure <laughs> does. Um, but yeah, like, I'm not against them working, like, it's a bummer they're working for Blizzard because, frankly, I don't play Blizzard games. Like, I'll play a Diablo remake if they if that's what they're doing, but I'm not going to jump back into WoW. I don't want to play a MOBA. Overwatch is cool, but I'm real bad at it, so I'm not going to actually buy a new Overwatch or anything like that. You know what they need to do? Just continue the Warcraft storyline. Like, go with Warcraft 4. Like, I would drop everything for that game. Yeah, I wouldn't, but, <laughs> but <I laughs> there are a the, lot of people or, or, would. Or even, like, I I never finished the Protoss campaign for StarCraft 2, but go to StarCraft 3, like... Yeah, I mean, that's what everyone wants them to do, but they they never will. Right. At least at least yeah. while they keep making money off of WoW and yeah. Overwatch and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a shame, because, like, I love a good RTS, and I would... Like, I, I'm, I'm mad at myself for still not having gotten the remaster of, of Command & Conquer yet, but, like... I don't really know of any RTSs having been released recently, and I'm just, like, I've been jonesing to play that kind of game. So, that fucking, um, thir 13 Sentinels, um, Aegis Rim that I was telling you about, that's got, like, an RTS element to it with, like, tower defense stuff. Okay. I mean, like, I, That's what I'm saying. That, that game, uh, like, it's 60 bucks, like, I know you can't just go buy it, but it's got giant monsters, teenagers and mechs, anime aesthetic, um... Real time strategy, tower defense elements, time travel. It's literally. It should really just be called Richie's game. I, and I, after you <laughs> saying that and me looking into it, I do want to get it. But like, because it's a super anime game, I'm afraid of how long it's going to be. And I'm currently slugging through, uh, uh, Age of Calamity. That I'm like 30 hours into this game and I'm not done yet. And like, I don't want a long game right now. So like, so I to a hundred percent for 13 sentinels is 37 hours and you know that's what i'm gonna go for because i can't yeah, go for anything else i don't think 37 hours is that long i mean uh uh for but like i said for uh age of calamity 
um, and that's, uh, uh, for, for, um, main story and other is like 30 hours, or it's 25 hours, I think, on how long to beat, but I'm taking a little bit longer to do it. Yeah, so Age of Calamity for completion is 71 hours. Yeah, and that's, that's like, I think that's also playing every mission on all the difficulties. I don't, like, that's not how far I'm gonna go. Probably, and yeah, main plus extra on here is 36 and a half hours. So, you're probably gonna end up clocking in somewhere between like 40 and 50, I would assume. I I think I'm gonna be sub 35, but very close to 36 hours. Like, I'm. Oh, are you close to finishing, you think? I, I am uh, chapter 6, which there's 7 chapters. I looked it up yesterday. I'm chapter 6. There's 7 chapters, but I just got to chapter 6. And, like, I played the game for, like, 3 hours yesterday, and I didn't advance a chapter at all because, well, I moved from chapter 5 to chapter 6 because I had one mission left at the end of chapter 5, and then I did all of the new stuff that loaded up for chapter 6 before doing the first mission in chapter And, it, like, even some of the missions can take upwards of a half hour for me. Well, it's- on the... On the bright side, at least you're not playing Dragon Quest Eleven S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition. Completionist <laughs> for that is 129 hours. Uh, yeah, and I Eric told me because like there's like six. It ends like six different times. Yeah, and like every time it ends, there's like oh, like the game is over, credits rolled. You don't have to play anymore, but you could do this, and then you do that, and I don't know if credits are ever, but like game is over, you don't have to do anymore. But you could do this. And, like, each one progresses the story further, but it's not necessary. And, like, at one point, he was over, like, our parents' house for dinner playing. And, like, he's just blind playing it. Because he's like, I just need to level up my characters. It's the end of the game. Like, this final, final, final part. Unless you're level capped with all this extra shit and all this armor and whatnot and blah, blah, blah. You can't win. And I'm like, how is this fun? It doesn't look fun. Yeah. So, I, I was just curious, so I just looked it up. Um, so, Diablo, time to beats. Uh, Diablo original, like just Diablo 1, completionist, 28 and a half hours. Diablo 2, without the expansion, 165 hours. Diablo 3, with no expansions or anything, 148 hours. What is their criteria for completionist? That's exactly what I was. Is it is it every difficulty or is it? It doesn't say. Like that's the problem. Like I honestly don't know, but I just think it's it's hilarious that like I don't know. Like I feel like you could go through all of Diablo two in less than one hundred and sixty five hours and do everything with every character. So like I mean I'm sure you could be like, but that's also like no bots helping you, no skipping areas, just going from area to area. And it's probably going, doing every area, doing every quest, on every difficulty. Um, that ain't even nearly that long, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like we we were able to beat Diablo 2 with Lord of Destruction while doing every quest within 10 hours. Oh, easily. So, like, what would you say, Cobb? 100 and what? 165 for just base Diablo 2. For some reason, Diablo 2 Lords of Destruction is 162 hours. I'm not sure if that is just the the expansion content, uh, unless like well, some of I the mean, things that they added into Lord of Destruction make it a faster playthrough than it would in just the base game. Maybe, I, but again, like we don't know what the actual criteria is, so it's yeah. hard to really determine that. Because mm-hmm. if it's you know go through it with every class, like Lord Lord of Destruction added classes, mm-hmm. yeah. So like theoretically, it should be longer. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, I'm a little uh, Drew, and I'm, I'm sure you are too. I'm bummed that Vicarious Visions won't be doing Tony Hawk Three and Four remakes. Yeah, but hopefully we, hopefully because those games did as well as they did, like we get to see more of that, just like they did with Crash. Like the Crash and Tain trilogy did really good. Toys with Toys for Bob, I think, is a studio that did Crash Four. Crash Four is pretty good. So you know, they just have to find another team that like understands why Tony Hawk is fun. And let them make a Tony Hawk game. And I mean, at this point, it's basically, here's this engine, don't fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Here, here's how the game should feel. Like, add some tricks, but really just make levels that are fun. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's all you have to do. Because that 1 and 2 remake is basically, like, it has every all the reverts and shit from the future of Tony Hawk's already anyway. So it's not yeah. like someone has to go in and figure out how to add the revert manuals yeah, and, and shit. To- yeah, nobody wants to get off the board 
Like, yeah. nobody wants to go have to talk to people to pick up quests or anything like that. Like, go into a level, put two minutes, 2.30 on the clock, however long it is, and give me a list of fucking goals to try and meet. Yep. I will give you $60 if you give me that game. <laughs> uh, so, did either of you guys watch the Resident Evil Village reveal stream thing? No. I, I usually try to keep up on stuff, especially when Cop can't. Capcom, Capcom, like does this stuff, but I, I didn't even realize it was happening that day. And then, I mean, you didn't even realize that they announced that, uh, that pro controller for Monster Hunter. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I wasn't, I hadn't been paying too much attention. I think because I've been playing a lot of freaking Hyrule. <laughs> oh my god, that game! It's great. Uh, it's great. It's just so goddamn long. Well, finish it, and then you can come talk about it more. Uh, should be done next week, maybe. But anyway, uh, Capcom did like a, a stream last week. That was definitely set up to seem like it was going to be way more than it was. Uh, but it was a Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 8 kind of reveal thing. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the stuff that, that we got up front with uh, the initial trailer plus a gameplay demo. Um, it's first person again, just like 7. Um, they're adding guarding. Hey, Rich, have you played 7 yet? I have not played 7. Um, and that's kind of why, like, once I get done Hyrule Warriors, that's going to be my weekend game because I can't fucking play that game. And, I mean, most Re- Resident Evil games aren't super long either, so that's probably just a couple weekends to get through it. Yeah, yeah. And it'll it'll be done before Monster Hunter. Yeah. I know that much, because Monster Hunter's in March. Okay. But, so, they're adding, like, a guarding ability, so, like, you can literally, like, put your arms up to, like, guard yourself against enemy attacks. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, enemies will actually f- come at you differently, depending on, like, the type of enemy. So, you'll actually need to figure out how to go against them differently. It's not just going to be, like, a run-and-gun sort of game, which is good. Um, and they're bringing back Tetris inventory. Okay. okay. Um, and they're actually adding crafting to it as well. So you'll be able to craft and, like, have to arrange your inventory like an RE4 to make sure that, like, all of your things can fit or you have to toss something to fit something else. Nice. Not bad. Um, I don't, which I I don't mean, hate that. It, it, it definitely gets frustrating at times, but, like, it fits the survival horror game. Like, that, yeah. that is the right type of you, game to have that system. When, when you're running a survival horror game, you need limited inventory. I don't care what anybody else says. You need that feeling of you could run out of, of ammo or healing at any moment, and you need that anxiety thing. Yeah, the only thing the game, ha- like, the only thing the game has to be able to do is provide you ways to get through things if you do run out of things. Yeah. Like, it, there can't be a mandatory gunfight if the game doesn't give you enough ammo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... So the setting, though, is like a creepy castle, mm-hmm. which, you know, creepy castles are cool. Um, Ethan, did I not put down his last name? I didn't put it. Ethan from Seven is the main character again. I was, um, I was, when you said Ethan, I was going to be like, Ethan Hawke? <laughs> that'd be kind of cool. Ethan Hawke has him. That guy's a um, great actor. People seem to know who he is now, which is a little off-putting. And like a, like a podcast I've listened to actually brought this up, too. Like him having this sort of like air about him where like everyone knows his name makes him feel more like he's going to end up being, like, some weird action hero mm. instead of the what-the-fuck-is-going-on guy that he was in 7. <laughs> and that was way better because he, he was just a guy... He was a guy that was trying to find his missing wife and just not die. <laughs> yeah, I'm. but at the, at the same time, I guess, like, all of the other heroes that you've played in all the Resident Evils, they were just... They were cops. Like... Yeah, they were heroes, but they were cops that started off as, like, what the fuck is going on? And and then became, like, the Leon and Chris that you know from uh, 4 and 5. Yeah, I mean, you're you're not wrong there, but I don't know. I just, I like the idea of having more of, like, just the scrappy everyman as the yeah. protagonist rather than a dude who's just going to punch, like, walls open and shit. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they'll, hopefully they'll keep a little bit with the realism and not the, the, the action hero aspect of it. Um, Which I feel like they probably learned their lesson after how much people hated Resident Evil 6. Five, uh, five and six. Five is like that border one. Like people, not ever yeah. like people across the, no one likes Resident Evil 6. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I don't Res- think five is that bad though. Like no. it's not as good as the rest, it's just not. It's. The the issue is five had like two puzzles and six had no puzzle and it they six was not a survival horror whereas five still had a little aspect of survival horror but not as much. Yeah, they were they definitely were both more action games, but yeah. five at least still had sort of it still felt stressful. Yeah. Um. 
what else do we have here? So in the opening video, the the big vampire woman everyone likes, um, she's talking to someone on the phone called Mother Miranda about Ethan escaping from somebody called Heisenberg and that he's already been too much for her daughters to handle. Um, which makes it seem like like whatever's going on with Ethan, like apparently he is just better than he was. Yeah. Um they mentioned something about a ceremony. Uh she mentions her brother. Um or that he that she I forget exactly how the line went. It was something along the lines of, um, like, he already got past my brother, or my brother couldn't stop him, which makes me wonder if it's something from Resident Evil 7, like one of the the creepy people from the mansion he's holed up in. Um, And then the virgin, or the virgin, the merchant in this game also says anyone who's anyone knows who Ethan is. So they're definitely playing him up as being something more important than just, like, the dude looking for his wife. Yeah. Um, Also, in case you guys haven't been on the internet... Everybody on online seems to want to fuck the tall vampire lady. Hey, yep. she's pretty hot. Just saying, she's pretty hot. But yeah, that that's kind of what I took away. But before I watched this, was the internet really, really likes the tall vampire lady. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to release on May seventh, which isn't that far away. Um, it's going to be coming to last gen too, so PS4 and Xbox One. Mm-hmm. Um, it was originally announced just for next, like for current gen, so X- Xbox Series X and PS5. Um, PS5 is going to have a free digital upgrade, so if you buy the physical copy or I or assume the digital copy, you can upgrade it for free to the PS5 copy. Xbox is just smart delivery, so whichever version you buy will just play on whichever fucking console you own. Yeah. Um, I don't know about you guys though. I'm a little worried about it coming to last gen. Um, it was announced exclusively for next gen consoles when it was announced last year, and. After seeing what happened with Cyberpunk trying to make a game that plays well on both generations just fail fucking miserably, it's a little worrying. I, I can see that, but at the same time, like, they they made a game that plays well on PC that doesn't play well on either console. So, like, I, I don't know, it might be a little different, and, like, maybe they were able to get this to work better, plus they I guess, have had more time to make it work. I don't really know, but... I'm not too concerned because, like, this, it, it's a game that they're, like, that it, they first said, like, we'll work on your PS5. And it's just like, oh, it, it'll be extra. To, it's, it's just, they did a little bit of extra work to get to work on PS5, I guess. I, yeah. I, I just hope it's not, like, a thing where the PS5 and Xbox series it, versions of it suffer because they had to make it so that it would play all right on last gen. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, totally understandable. I, yeah, I get that, but they also already had a really good working version of this in Resident Evil 7. Like, it, I, what, what upgrades did they do graphically and visually and, and system-wise between these two to where it might be a hindrance for it to be able to play on PS was the question. Well, I mean, and, and that's the thing, like, maybe they did do a bunch of work to make it look better. Maybe, you know, like, like between, like, 4K, ray tracing, HDR, all that stuff, that, you know, most of that wasn't really there on PS4. I mean, like, the, the 4K and the HDR were available, but, like, RE7 wasn't even, like... Like, it looked really good, but it was also scaled back a little bit because it could be played in VR the whole way through. Yeah. Um. So that's kind of what I meant. Like, if you if you design the game for, like, what's, what is now current gen, what, like, punches did they have to pull to then make it run well enough to confidently release it on PS4 and Xbox One? Don't know. I mean... So, it's not new news that it's coming to the platform. No, they just announced it on, on this stream. No, they announced it at Tokyo Game Show. Oh, they made it sound like it was announced on this stream that it was coming to those platforms. No, they said that, and I was like, no, I'm pretty sure they said the at least at Tokyo Game Show, I guess they really confirmed it on the stream, but at Tokyo Game Show, they said they are, it is being developed for next-gen consoles, but they're doing everything they can to also make it run on ps4 and xbox one okay and so the this thing was actually them just confirming they did it because the the way the the way the producer that was talking said it was and we're happy to confirm that we've had the time and put in the the work to get these games to not only run on on next gen consoles but it will also run on current gen ps4 and xbox one and i kept getting i kept getting a little irked that he kept calling it current gen i'm like no motherfucker that was last gen we are already in the new gen just move forward but yeah, like they they super hedged their bets at the Tokyo Game Show thing because they said we're looking into it but can't make any promises at that point. So okay, but 
it's been they said in September they're going to try for sure. All right. Um other than that though, they also they released a demo kind of like they did with Resident Evil 7. Uh it's called The Maiden. It's only available on PS5. It's from what they were saying, it's supposed to basically show off like what the game is capable of and how it looks in on the PS5. Yeah. Um I- at the end of it, they even say thank you for playing our visual showcase or something like that. Like, it is, it's, it's, like, I don't even think you can consider it a demo, but it is just, like, like you said, it's a tech demo, if, if anything. Like, yeah. Uh, it, it's, uh, like, did you play it? Who? You. Or either of you, but. It's only on PS5. Oh, duh. Uh, I did play it. I played it before we recorded. Um, I only played it for about a half hour, and I went directly through like, how to get out, and that's all, I didn't really explore much, um, and basically it opens up where you, like, there's a piece of paper, and it t- tells you, like, you read it, and it's like, here's how you get out, follow these steps, and you can get out, and so I followed those steps, and, like, I got to the actual castle part, and then there was a little bit of a puzzle that you had to go through in order to get the key to get out, but it looks like I could explore more, but in the notes it says, like, don't let them see you, or, or you'll die, and one of the, I guess, daughters saw me, and attacked me and bit me, uh, which I thought I was dead right then and there, and then I was able to run out and unlock the door, and there was, uh, the, the, the tall vampire. It was, it was interesting, it was intense, it's, it looks really pretty. Like, the but castle, you did, so you did manage to, es- like, quote-unquote escape? Well, yeah, like, your escaping is opening the door, and the, 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 uh, the, I guess, Mother Miranda or the giant vampire woman is standing there talk, like, who opens it into you and grabs you and kills you. Yeah. So Mother Miranda is not the tall vampire yeah. lady. She yeah. calls, uh, she is on the phone with somebody that she calls Mother Miranda. Okay. So, like, yeah, it, like, I did manage to escape, but I'm like, now I'm sitting here, like, what else, what did I miss? What else could I have explored? Like, was it scripted that that vampire woman attacks me when you get the key? What is it? And so, like, I, I want to go back to it, maybe, but at the same time, it's dark out, so I probably won't. Oh, don't be a bitch. Just do I, it. But it also means that I have to start from the very beginning and make my way through to get to that explorative area. Like, yeah, that's it true. Is, it, like, it was at most a half hour, but, like, it still took half of that just to get to the mansion itself. So, like, I'd have to do those 15 minutes and then try to explore, which I might not even be able to. So I might, like, look it up first to see if it's worthwhile before actually doing it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, honestly, that that sim- seems like it was more... I don't I don't know if you ever did the kitchen demo for RE7. I did. Um, But, like, that really was nothing. It was literally, you were just stuck in a chair. You were able to explore in the kitchen demo. Oh, no, I'm thinking of the, um, the VR demo. Sorry. Yeah. I forgot about that. They they released two different demos. The VR one, you were actually, um, I think actually the the one where you could explore wasn't called the kitchen demo. Yeah, I uh, can't remember what it was called, but yeah, the the original demo started off where like you were stuck in the seat and or, like you were watching a vi- or you ended up getting the video to watch where they were stuck in the seat from the kitchen demo. Right. Yeah, because you were like a like a film crew or something like that, and yeah. two people you were with, um, two of them were murdered and everything. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot about that. So the whole time I was thinking of the demo, I was thinking of the um, the VR one where you actually can't move mm-hmm. um, because you're supposed to just be strapped to the chair. And as you're looking around, the fucking vampire um, zombie woman keeps, like, showing up and doing weird shit. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot that they actually had, like, a real one that you could wander around with, too. Yeah. There was uh, one point during the demo I thought I was going to be, be attacked by, like, zombies or something because there was uh, – it's in the dungeon still, right at the very beginning – uh, as you go to the back door to escape, there's, like, a wall partition that's, um, everything around you is stone, but then there's this wooden area that's all, like, locked off. And you could hear, like, koosh, koosh thing, and it'll shake and move as, like, things are banging into it. And it sounded like a zombie behind. I was like, oh, fuck, hurry up. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm actually, so I will probably download that after I get the PS5 just to okay. check it out. Yeah. Um, other things they announced, they announced, um, RE-verse. Uh, which is an online multiplayer game that they're doing for the 25th anniversary. It's uh, four to six person deathmatch battles. Um, it's free to anyone that gets Resident Evil Village. 
And it's going to feature characters from, like, all the games. So you'll get, like, Chris Redfield and Claire and Jill and Leon and... Yeah, it, I mean, it sounds very much like the the pack-on with the Resident Evil 3 Nemesis remake. Um, it was... There was a game that was, like... It was, it was like, four players versus um, a, a player who controlled just the zombies. Right, it was like that... That, um, that asynchronous multiplayer, I think, is yeah. what that's called. Yeah, and I played, like, ten minutes of it, and th- there there was, like, no one on, and I, it just, I, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't, it wasn't captivating it. Yeah, I mean, I have a feeling this one's gonna be the same way. Yeah, and that's why it's like a pack-in. It's like, alright, well, you bought the new game here, we'll give you this for free, because otherwise no one's gonna buy it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so, I used that gift card I mentioned I had last week, and ended up buying Hades. Good I also bought Okami, because I've never played Okami. I've I played, heard that's really good. I played Okami on the Wii forever ago. Never beat it. Never got even, like, halfway through it, I don't think. I've always wanted to go back to it. Or, no, not the Wii. Uh, on the PS2. The original release on the PS2. And, like, never went back to it. And it's been re-released on, like, every console since then. And yeah, I just... it was on sale for $9 on Switch. So I yeah. grabbed that with the, the gift card also. Um... I haven't played that yet. I'm looking forward to checking that out because I have. I've never played it, but apparently it's it's really good. Yeah, when when I played it back in the day, I enjoyed it. I just I don't know what happened that I never beat it. Well, I guess if it was a PS2 era for you, like you'd have been high school, so yeah. it might have just been one of those things where like between like school and working, because you started McDonald's in high school, didn't you? Yep. Uh, when I was 17. Yeah. So like between that stuff and yeah. Your brother like, hogging the PlayStation. Yeah, like. the the PlayStation Two was Eric's, and he he owned it. It was his, and it was yeah, it was a PlayStation Two originally. So like, I yeah. couldn't really play it that often. Um, so yeah, I mean, it makes sense, but it was a good game. It was fun. It was interesting and beautiful. Yeah, no, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that that's all like. Um, but I played like a, a chunk of Hades. Um, I'm probably I th- I'm somewhere between fifteen and twenty runs attempted. Mm-hmm. Um. I've gotten as far as the the Minotaur in Elysium. Okay. Um, my most like I can pretty consistently get to the the Skull Hydra. Can't always get past the Skull Hydra, but I can pretty consistently get to them. Yeah. Okay. W- which I guess that's the end of the second area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I, I, honestly, it's a lot of times. It's um. I I need I need to get one more of those um. Save yourself from death things Mm -hmm. um because once i have that i'll probably be able to do a little bit better because i I usually if i get to the hydro and i still have that i'm usually good if i lost that on megara i'm usually fucked Mm -hmm. but yeah i have you have you fought any of the other furies or just meg just meg i mean do the other ones show up as bosses or they they they, so as i i don't know the progression drew can speak to more of it but as you progress and get stronger or better i guess um the furies change yeah you'll start seeing the other two. Oh, so like instead of meg being in the in the room it'll be one of the others mm-hmm. and actually there's a thing once you've completed your first escape when you get the the heat board to change stuff to increase the difficulty one of the things gives the all the end bosses extra attacks and for the furies that'll mean at least one of the others is also there, like, just popping up doing attacks, not, like, as a separate health bar, doing their AoE attacks on you at time. So sometimes you have well, to fight all fucking three of them, basically. Well, that sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, I, so, I like it. I don't know if I'm gonna play much more of it, though. Because, like, like I was saying before, like, roguelikes are just not my cup of tea. I'm not very good at them. Yeah. Um, and I get kind of frustrated redoing the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think that this one actually having story beats between all of the, the runs, like having people to go talk to and like interact with and do stuff with like between runs actually does help break it up a little bit for me. Mm -hmm. Um, like I've, I've, I've had runs where like, I was actually kind of happy to die to go back and like interact with people. Um, because like, like right after I got like nectars for the first time, I'm just like, oh, I can go back and actually like give these to people and see what happens. Yep. Um, but Rich, I do disagree with you about the combat though. Like, I think there's more to the combat than what you made it sound like. There definitely is. I, it's news to me. I have not, 
I, all I'm hitting is squares and triangles. You're playing a motherfucking Muso game at the same time. <laughs> yeah, but... And complaining about the combat no, in fucking Hades. <laughs> no, but in Hades, all I'm hitting is squares or triangles. In Dynasty, in, in Hyrule Warriors, I am pl- pressing squares and triangles in different combinations. And How are you pressing squares and triangles on the Switch? <laughs> you know what I'm fucking saying. It's <laughs> sorry. We we all have the PlayStation. It is the common. Plus, I don't know what the fuck a Switch controller looks like. I just know it as squares and triangle because it's YXBA. Yeah, and it every and and X is X is on all three different controllers in a different fucking spot. So Correct. square and triangle is the easiest one. So X on the Switch controller is square on the PlayStation tr- controller, dude. No, uh, yeah, yes. X no. on the on, X on the Switch is square on. No, no, the, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. It's swapped. Um, X is like the triangle on the Switch controller. X on the play, on the Xbox controller is the square on the PlayStation yeah. controller. Honestly, that's that's how I keep them straight. Usually is. I know A and Y on the Xbox controller. Like A is the yeah. is the bottom button and Y mm-hmm. is the top one. And I know the switch is reversed from that. Dude, Dynasty War- or Hyrule Warriors will give me prompts to hit fucking Y or X, and I still have to look at the controller because it's funny. Just, but like, not only does it give a prompt, it'll have like the four buttons and which one to hit and say Y, and I still have to double check myself. Yeah, the only thing that gets me on the sw- on the switch is. A being, um, A being except, except B being, mm-hmm. uh, cancel. Just because, like, muscle memory, I want to go, I want to hit the, that right button to cancel something. Yeah. Because that's how every other fucking console does it. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it's, like, button prompts or stuff like that, like, I know which buttons are which one I'm holding the controller. That's yeah. messed me up a couple times in Hades, uh, playing on Switch, especially jumping back and forth from playing it on PC, is a few times I've accidentally picked a wrong boon or bought or sold an item or boon i didn't mean to because i hit the a button on the switch trying to back out of the menu instead of hitting the fucking b button yeah no i've I've been there on in different games before but but yeah rich so i mean you're not wrong like you're you're hitting buttons for attacks but depending on the weapon you have like it's going to change the way you're attacking so like like there are kind of combos they're just not they're not combos like you, like you're thinking of from like a fighting game. But but when I said that, like yes, each weapon has its own play style, but there's no variety to that weapon once you use it so many. Times. There's no variety to the bow and arrow. The bow and arrow fucking sucks in my. There's 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 no variety. Like the shield is just a single hit. If I I haven't used a shield in a while, um, but the shield is a single hit or a throw. Dude, the shield is the only weapon I've been using. The shield is great. I love the shield. But it's like you're either doing that quick hit, and there's no like if I'm hitting square, 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 or or y y y if because I play on Switch, like it's just one hit, one hit. It's not like hit, hit, hit or anything. But then when you're using the fists and you're hitting y y y, it's just punch, 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 punch six times. It doesn't. There's no variety to how his attacks are. It's just him hitting four. That's what gets me. I, I get- mean. Well, go ahead, Cobb. I'll let you say your piece first. So, I don't know that I lo- So, I think there there's more to it. Like, yes, when you hit B, he's doing the same attack. Um, or I guess in in this case, like Y, he's doing the same attack each time. But you know, like with with the shield, for instance, you know, yes, if you just tap it, you're just going to hit him with the shield. Um, if you hold it though, you do the block charge. If you hit somebody with the shield twice and you have knockback on it, you're going to knock them back and then you can throw the shield as like a, like a follow up and have it ricochet off of three guys. Like it's not, it's not like when you're playing like the Musos or the monster hunters where every time you swing you, every time you hit the attack button, he swings the sword differently in like, you know, like the, the three hit pattern or whatever. But there is, there is complexities to each weapon and how you string together your attacks. And, and like there is the dash attacks and, dashing and the cast button and the calls like it's not a fucking strictly two button thing no and i i i've actually i never get the calls i the calls because they never work properly like i've i'm never in a room long enough to require to have a call because then the call eventually runs out but and only during boss maybe but i do use Uh the cast i do use that cast and in my opinion the best cast is zeus's no one else's just Zeus's. I what mean, is Zeus's? Zeus's it's chain. A it's, it's chain a chain lightning. lightning. 
So I dis I, I disagree with that. That one was really cool. For a while there, I really liked the the one that just sent like the spinning block of just destruction at everyone, and it bounced around the room. That's Ares's. Um, yeah, yeah but I was going to say it's Ares. Yeah, I don't I don't know who's what at this point. But I found one that all it like I found one one buff that all it does is it just makes your attacks do significantly more damage when enemies are pinned with your cast. So I started using that one whenever it comes up, and it makes taking the bosses down so much fucking quicker and easier. And, like, to your point about the call, Richie, yeah, like, they're not... It, I don't even really use it in most standard encounters at all, but for boss fights, like, especially uh, Lerny, the Bone Hydra, like, most of them, I mean, like, Aphrodite and uh, uh, Ar- uh, Artemis, those two, when you have it full charge, when you get to that final phase of learning, it's a one-hit kill on them. Like, you get it down, you get through the last set of all the extra heads coming off, you have the full charge on it, boom, you hit it. It wipes out the rest of that health bar. Or, like, Athena's, where it's temporary invincibility and deflects all attacks coming in at you, like, you could just keep popping that off. Or, like, they're incredibly useful. And if you're not using them, you're making the game way harder. On I, 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 I also like the likelihood of me getting one that's useful because of how many different boons there are. I've never seen one that I was like, this, this is per Like, I, I don't think I've ever seen Aphrodite's. I don't I mean, think I've the, ever seen it. The only one I think, the only one I don't know that I've ever gotten except to complete the, the prophecy for them is, um, Dionysus. Like, I haven't fa- seen how that one's particularly useful, but... So, I haven't really... Like, I haven't been offered many of them. I've never taken one, though, because they all... they I thought they were one-time use. No. Um, and they all have such short time limits on them. I'm like, well, I'm not going to waste my time with one of these things when I can get this thing that gives me 300% more attack power. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Knowing that they're that they're not one-time use, like, they're, they intrigue me a little bit more. But like I can get what Richie's saying. Like there's not. It seems like there's not a whole lot of use case for them unless you're in a particular boss situation like, where like you need it. Like when it comes to games that have something like that, like the calls, or like I I kind of liken it to like God mode in God of War or Spartan Fury, or whatever the Rage mode in God of War. Like if I could build that up and it just holds until I need to use it, I'd be a lot more excited about it. Like I that's... mean, you will. You will get a full meter in every single boss fight. When I fight the Furies, I don't even get half a meter. And I don't... Well, no, I actually have never had it when I go to fight the Furies. Might have had it once when I went to fight the the Hydra. I mean, I'll say I don't know that I particularly ever really use it in the fights against the Furies. They're not that difficult. Uh, But, like, the last three boss fights, you fucking absolutely... Um, And just to kind of wrap up my, my thoughts... Um, it is not a game of the year for me, like in any way, shape or form. I do understand why people like it as much as they do and would vote it game of the year. It's just, again, it's, it's a roguelike and I don't have that sort of love for those style of games. But like, I think this, I think stylish, stylist, stylistically, it looks great. It does play really well. Like it, everything feels good in it. Mm -hmm. Um, the progression is easy to follow. Um, Mm -hmm. it did take like, I know, Rich, you complained about the um, the number of currencies, and it did take me a little bit to, like, kind of wrap my head around all of them. But, like, once I did, like, I feel like like I, I know what to do with each of them now. Um, I don't think any game needs more than two currencies, but that's just what games do nowadays. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's fun. Like, it's, it's, it, it's definitely a game where, like, if I need to just place, if I have time to just play something for, like, 20 minutes and I don't feel like playing, like, Mario or something like that on like the the SNES um app. That's the sort of game I'd probably pick up and just do like a run and then be done with it. Mm-hmm. Which is why like I don't know that I'll ever really make like real real progress in it, but it's cool. It, I get it. Yeah. But uh Drew, you actually like rolled like final credits on it. I did. And like I I'm going to go ahead and say that game is top 10 games of all time. Like straight up, it's one of the best games and y'all are crazy. <laughs> I mean, it it all comes down to preference. Like, I'm Rich. I'm sure, like one of your top ten favorite games of all time is Monster Hunter World, right? Uh, 
generally it's just Monster Hunter in general. Like, I don't say it's... Because, like, it, it is World Now, but the next one... I'm not gonna, like, oh, well, Monster Hunter Generations was, was is, is number nine, and Monster Hunter World is number eight. So, it's Monster Hunter in general, is part of my top ten. Yeah, so, you know, it, it all comes down to preference. Like, I don't like either style of those games, so neither of them are, are on my list. But, like, you guys like those style of games, so each one is independently your favorites. Yeah. But, uh, what was the was the tenth run, or, well, the tenth successful escape worth it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll, I'll say maybe the, the end didn't exactly go where I expected it to, or felt it was leading up to at that point but then they give you plenty of compelling reason to keep playing it after getting the 10th escape i was gonna say like do, like does the game continue from there yeah okay just i know so giant bomb talked about what the ending was during one of their one of their days of, of game of the year so like mm-hmm. i heard what the final ending was but i didn't remember if they said like there was stuff to do after that yeah i i mean again i i don't know exactly how much more with some of the characters there is to do after you get the 10th escape but like i definitely still have shit with characters that is not fully resolved yet okay so you get to like keep going back and like continuing like the storylines with like the different characters and stuff like that mm-hmm. okay and then, well that's cool like i said they give you at least a good enough narrative excuse to keep playing the game and keep trying to make escapes beyond the one reason you were trying to make the escapes in the first place. Yeah, and honestly, like, like the little... I guess starting that game already knowing what the, like, final ending is, uh, I guess it, like, colors my impression of the characters a little bit differently. But, like, for me, I go into it, I'm like, okay, well, I see where this is going already. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I guess I can go back and listen to those now that I got that final escape. I mean, Hades Hades was on the nomination list for Best Dad of the Year. That he was. And I'm pretty sure he beat out some other notable dads. Like, I think he got cut later if he got cut at all. I don't know, because that's one thing I... I hadn't skipped that one with the explicit reason of not wanting to hear Hades spoilers. But then there was the best moment stuff that I skipped, and then I didn't listen to their final Game of the Year list. Though, I listen to the bombcast today or from yesterday and i know that it won their game of the year so it did they actually this year's like top 10 was probably the one that i could get behind the most even if i didn't uh, like even if i didn't personally like all the games or where they fell if that makes sense Mm -hmm. like it wasn't PUBG winning is what i'm saying (laughs) i'm just trying to figure out were there really 10 video games with dads in them this year or last year well, dads or dad adjacent, like like one guy um, jokingly put Jesse f- as a um, a horny dad from Final Fantasy VII <laughs> because okay. like she kind of takes care of Cloud, but she also just wants Cloud. Also, for their other categories, there doesn't necessarily need to be ten nominees. Well, oh yeah, that that's true. They they don't do top ten lists for all their categories. Um, their game their their game of the year list is is a top 10 with like one definitive win, like a ranked list everything else is it's um one winner and two runners up and they just whittle it down from whatever crazy list they come up with like sometimes it's five games sometimes it's 30 games uh, okay um, i was just it's not necessarily dad it's dad figures it doesn't have to be the male parental unit of the character it's just strangely yeah, yeah, like, fatherly figures and jesse yeah so like barrett was also on the list i honestly it was last week and i have already forgotten who actually was nominated and who won but yeah it, it was like anyone dad adjacent like i think joel was on the list temporarily yeah i figured joel was gonna be on the list i forgot barrett had his daughter but i mean there's only three dads in 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 last year's gaming as far as i know well, so uh, again, it's also like the dad figures. So like, yeah. there was like a character on their list that was um from um Ghost of Tsushima, mm-hmm. that was like a like a dad figure. Yeah, but yeah, it, it was. They do some interesting lists, like best dad, um, please stop, which I don't think was actually one of the ones this year. It may have been though. Uh, no, they had most distressing. That's what it was, most distressing, which was you know definitely a thing. What was um, that? Oh, Cyberpunk. Never mind. <laughs> did Cyber? I thought Cyberpunk didn't win that. Did Cyberpunk not win it? 
because I didn't you get down to Cyberpunk, Avengers, and something else. I actually I think you're right. I don't remember off, like a hundred percent though. Oh, Warcraft was Warcraft the other one? I know Brad was making a strong push for that Warcraft three Reforged to be on yeah. the list. <laughs> He he definitely was, but Rich, just to give you like a like a quick little little idea of some of the the dads they picked, um, they picked Hades from Hades, Barrett from Final Fantasy VII, uh, Tom Nook, Lord Shimura, which was the character from Ghost of Tsushima, Uncle Atul from Spirit Fair, Joel from The Last of Us, um, Doctor Anderson, which is Abby's dad from The Last of Us, uh, Tony Hawk from Tony Hawk Pro Skater. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Hawk was the best dad, I think, if I remember correctly. Um. Uh no, uh he he was one of the two runners up. Okay, but yes, um Tony Hawk, Jesse from Final Fantasy VII, um Kamala's dad from the Avengers. Okay, Spelunky guy, Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, as well as Goku, but they cut Goku before Piccolo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Piccolo's a better dad. Piccolo is no, a I, better dad. A hundred percent. Like he was more dad to Gohan than uh. Goku. Than Goku he, ever was. Even if Goku was dead for half of Gohan's life, like, that doesn't excuse him for being a bad dad. Yeah, so they ended up picking, the the winner for that category was um, Kamala's dad in Avengers, mm -hmm. and then Barrett and Tony Hawk were the runners-up. Okay. Hey, Tony Hawk's son is also in that Tony Hawk remake, so. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it is, like, older, middle-aged Tony Hawk. Like, they didn't try and make him, like, 30-year-old Tony Hawk again. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I would, uh, say, uh, Tom Nook should have been eliminated first, because Tom Nook is not a dad. He is that creepy uncle that just wants money for Yeah, but, I mean, they had other uncles on there, too, though. And frankly, Tom Nook, still a better dad than Goku. I would <laughs> debate that. Goku gave Cell a sensu beam. Tom Nook gives Timmy and Tommy a place to fucking live. And a job. But he forces his kids to work. He doesn't force them, they seem to really enjoy it. And he- and he lets them live their best lives, even with their weird speech impediment. They don't have a speech impediment. Yeah, one of them always repeats what the other one says. Well, yeah, I mean, that's not a speech it's, impediment. That's just... No, it's it's like a little tick. It's like the kid from The Middle, who would, like, whisper things after he said them out loud. I've never watched The Middle, and I want to. It's actually, it's, it it has a lot of good episodes. Um, It is worth watching, that, especially if it's on, like, Hulu or anything. That shows the reason Neil Flynn was not in the uh, uh final, final season of Scrub. Oh, that's right. I forgot he wasn't in the final season. He was in the, he was in less than, he was in like 30 seconds of the first episode. Um, and he wasn't in it because he got the middle and that was a better choice for him because that final season sucked. Yeah, that's, that is, I think you, you're the one that has told me that actually. We, well, yeah, it was, it was actually supposed to be a whole new series and blah, blah, blah. And it was bad. Which is unfortunate. Um, what is next though? Oh, so, um, I don't know if you guys saw this news. Microsoft tried to increase Xbox Live Gold. I it lasted for like this. five hours. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I heard about this. Um, uh, so they were basically they were going to make one month go up a dollar from nine ninety nine to ten ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Three months was going up five dollars from twenty four ninety nine to thirty dollars, and then six months was just going to be sixty, which I think is what twelve months used to cost, isn't it? I believe so. Um, but I mean. 60 is double 30, so, like, that math adds up. Um, but they had gotten rid of the 12-month plans back in the summer to begin with, so people thought they were just going to get rid of Xbox Live Gold entirely. Um, but no, they, they, they raised the prices for, like, like I said, like five hours. Um, the internet got, the internet got real mad at them, and they rolled that shit back, and then they also decided that free-to-play games no longer require Xbox Live Gold. So the only reason to have Xbox Live Gold or are you talking like the monthly gold games or are you talking No 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 no. So Fortnite for instance oh. on PlayStation you don't need PS Plus to play that online. Oh. You do yeah, so on Xbox. Xbox you has Xbox Live Gold to play. Yeah. Xbox has always been a little bad about walling off online services behind Xbox Live Gold. Mm -hmm. Um when Netflix first started really getting into streaming you used to have to have an Xbox Live's Gold subscription to stream Netflix on your Xbox. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like like games like Fortnite or any of the other free to play games that you can get on like Xbox or or, or um PS four or five, if it had an online component like Rocket League, you had to have Xbox Live Gold to play that free to play component. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, even though that game was entirely really online because the single player was boring. 
Um, now that's not the case. If it's free to play, you can play it without Xbox Live Gold. Yeah. Um, Xbox Live will still get you the games with gold, the discounts on games monthly, the ability to play other stuff online. Um, and I think I think you get better cloud saves with gold, but all get like no matter what your games get saved to the cloud. Mm-hmm. I just think like th- there's different levels of how they get saved. Maybe I haven't really looked into that. Um, the whole thing very f- much felt like a like a 2013 Xbox sort of you know everything is DRM and you need to have a TV subscription to to play on your games. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at least at least they listened to the people and like rolled that back. Um, because honestly, like I think we all know it was very much just a way to try and force people into Game Pass Ultimate. Yeah, yeah. Because at fifty nine ninety nine a year, uh, or I'm sorry, fifty nine ninety nine for six months, that's about the same cost as I think a year of Game Pass Ultimate, maybe. Yeah, it there it was just it was a bad idea. I saw the internet going crazy on it, and I was just like, I'm glad I don't care about this because I don't have an Xbox. Yeah, no, I mean it's I haven't had a, an Xbox Live subscription in years, mm-hmm. and. The, like, right now, technically, I do, because I, I do have Game Pass Ultimate, but if I drop my Game Pass to just, like, the regular one after the, um, because I, I got it, I got, like, a three-month sale where it was, like, a super good price. Yeah. Um, if I drop it entirely or drop it down to just, um, like, the regular Xbox-only one, I won't have live anymore, and I won't care that I don't have live. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't really have any benefits for me. Same way, like, Game Pass Ultimate, like, doesn't make sense for a lot of people. Like, the people that only play, like, Call of Duty, Minecraft, and Madden don't need Game Pass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, those games are not available on Game Pass. They get nothing out of that service. Yeah. Um. Also, they apparently have 18 million subscribers on Game Pass now. Damn. Nice. Yeah. That's a lot of people. How many, um. How many people actually use that on a, on a constant basis? I mean, they never had those sort of numbers released, yeah. but 18, 18 million is a lot of people. That's a lot of money in Microsoft's pockets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the kind of the flip side of the whole subscription services for consoles, PlayStation announced their February PlayStation Plus games. Uh, one of them is going to be Control Ultimate Edition. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, so the, the PS5 Xbox One version of that, or Xbox Series X version of that, actually comes out February 2nd. Mm-hmm. And it's part of the, the Ultimate Edition. So, like, you, I, I bought the Ultimate Edition for Xbox when it was on sale a few months ago. Um, but like you guys will be able to play it on PS5 if you want, and it's a super fucking cool game, and I'm excited to see what it looks like all beefed up. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely gonna give it a try. I I will I will give it a shot. May, uh, probably not right away, but uh, as as time passes. Yeah, I mean you have a bunch of other stuff going on right now. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, they also the other two games are going to be Concrete Genie and the Destruction All Stars. Um, Concrete Genie is apparently like a super cool game. Um. It's kind of like one of those sleeper hits. I just don't know much about it. I have, yeah, I remember hearing cool things about it, but I just don't remember what. I have no idea yeah. what that is. I just remember Destruction All Stars. They announced that uh, in November, back when they announced Bug Snacks had two months. Yeah, because well, because that was the game that was going to be. Um, it was going to be a launch one. title. Yeah, it was. Go- it was going to be a launch title. It was going to be sixty dollars. Then it got bumped out of launch, but was still sixty dollars. Mm-hmm. And then it, um, then they made it free to play, yeah. and they refunded all of the pre-orders they had for it. Yeah, right, yeah. right. And now it's, and that that was, I think they they refunded it after they made it, um, PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Like they announced PlayStation Plus, and they're like, and we're refunding all of these. Yeah, it's, I gotta, I gotta play uh, Man Eater still. I, uh, I started that, haven't gotten anywhere in it. Yeah, I'm actually. I'm I'm interested to check that out after Friday. It's it's stupid. I like it, but it's stupid. Cuz I mean you're you're a shark, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. so yeah, it, it, the the prologue uh teaches you how to play as like a big shark. And then um the the big shark that you play as ended up being a mama shark with a baby in its belly and then you play as the baby from the mama shark. And then oh, that's to, fucking weird. Then you have to just gr- like do things to level up and grow big and get get better. It's it's that interesting. Is, that's yeah. very weird. Yeah, it it's stupid because like one of the one of the NPCs, like your your main antagonist, I guess, uh, they introduce him. He's just such a a Bayou like Louisiana kind of guy, and it's 
you know that this developer just had so much fun making this game. Yeah, probably. And it's funny, like, I remember, like, when it came out, I I saw it, I'm just like, that's got to be, like, one of those, like, bargain games. Like, no one's going to want to play that. And then people super liked it. Yeah. And, and then, and then uh, uh, PlayStation decided, we'll give it to everyone for free and refund everyone who bought it within the last month. Yeah, which, honestly, that was kind of a cool move. Um, So, this GameStop stock stuff. We we were, we were talked about it a little bit before we actually started recording. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty fucking wild. Um, it looks like let's see where the, where the stock's at now. Uh, it's like three forty eight. Uh, oh, sorry, three forty seven fifty. Oh, I'm seeing two sixty two. Uh, where do you see that three hundred at? Uh, when I Google GameStop stock, it was probably three whatever at the end of five o'clock, which uh, probably doesn't update. Okay. Yeah. On whatever site you're looking for. Yeah, because I see the same thing on Google. I'm looking at Robinhood still, which I think is still the after-hours trade numbers, because it still keeps fluctuating. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, it's actually showing um, after-hours, it has dropped over $80. Mm-hmm. Um, but it went up about $200 today. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think it peaked somewhere in that, like, 350 range. Um, at 347 today, it was at $340. Um, and then in the last hour, couple hours, it's dropped considerably, but like still like for a stock that nine months ago was $2 and 80 cents a share. And on this past Tuesday was $40 a share. That is a huge fucking jump. Yeah. Um, so I read a bunch of articles about it to try and figure out like exactly how this whole thing works. Um, it's honestly probably easier for people to just go find an article and read about it. Um, but the, the gist that I got is, Investment firms like like your hedge funds and shit like that, they'll like borrow shares of of stocks, um, and then like and then sell them immediately to actually make the stocks drop in price, then buy them back at that cheaper price, and then that will make the stocks go back up. Mm-hmm. Um, so then they will se- they will give back the the borrowed ones, but then sell the extra that they were able to get. So like if they spent like four hundred dollars in shares. And then they, or they, if they had four hundred dollars in shares, they sold it. It dropped. They were able to buy that four hundred back, and then it raises to five hundred dollars a share. They keep a hundred dollars of that and give the four hundred dollars back to who they borrowed it from. And it's just like a super shitty way to do it because you're basically like forcing a company's stock up and down. Yeah. And when you're done, the stock is inevitably lower than it was before because even though it raised after your first um, buy, like after you bought it back initially. It's going to drop when you sell it again. Um, and apparently, like, companies will target stocks that just aren't doing well to do that sort of thing. And GameStop was one of the companies that got targeted for it. And, uh, Jesus, what the fuck was that? Food. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that was some aggressive fucking food. Um, so, anyway, uh, some, like, individual investors and stuff were, like, they were also seeing the trends, and it seems like people on Reddit just were not happy with how that was going down. So, like, as a group, they also started buying the stocks, and it was just slowly going up in shares because people kept buying them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then people, unrelated to all that, were buying them just because GameStop has made a bunch of changes to, like, their board of directors and, like, announcements and stuff like that that make it seem like they're trying to pull themselves out of the hole. It's really weird. Like, stock trading is fucking weird. Dude. Well, so, like, the stuff that, you, the last thing you said with GameStop making the changes and such, are what led its stock to increase in value up to the, like, what, $40 you said it was, like, a week ago or whatever? Yeah, like, earlier this week. It was, yeah, like, th- Friday when it was that high. Like, natural, actual shit. Then yeah. the last two days has been Reddit trying to fuck hedge companies, hedge fund yeah. companies. Yeah. Like, Which honestly, <laughs> like like those hedge fund companies are generally why like individuals can't invest, and like like a lot of those people are of the belief that like they shouldn't be allowed to invest. Like stock should only be invested upon people that have billions of dollars to invest in them. Mm-hmm. And so while they have kind of fucked some hedge fund companies a little bit, they've also made some people incredibly rich. Yeah, yeah. like like some. The guy who founded Chewy that bought in, like, $13 million a GameStop stock, a co- like, a couple months ago, now has, like, $1.6 in GameStop stock. And it's like, okay, you might have fucked a hedge fund, but you also just made this dude a billionaire. 
Yeah, and so he is also the one of the new board members that they yeah. they added to it. Um, but yeah, like I I know I was seeing something where one of those hedge funds lost like two point four billion dollars, and mm-hmm. then had to then got bailed out by another investment firm and lost all of that money too. Yeah. So yeah, like the whole thing is crazy. Um, it's it's the, it's ironic that uh selling GameStop stocks right now get you so much money, but if I bring my PS4 to them, I still get fifty. <laughs> yeah. So um apparently like like however people trend this stuff, it looks like something similar, like a similar uptick, maybe not as big of an uptake, may happen with AMC theaters. Mm-hmm. Um, I did see like a, a little news alert like right before we started recording that um nasdaq is thinking about stopping the stock trade for for those two companies until shit like settles down Mm -hmm. um because it's so volatile right now but i actually tried to go in and buy some uh some amc stock earlier just to just to see if i could it's like 15 bucks a share when i tried all of those like individual investment app things like your e-trades and your robin hoods are just fucked to get anything done on yeah like you, you sign up for an account, you you can't use your account. Like that, like it doesn't hit their databases or whatever. You can't add bank accounts to it to actually in, like put money in to then buy stocks. It's because mm-hmm. so many people are probably all trying to use those platforms at the same time right now. Yeah. But yeah, this may mean that like apparently because this happened, like GameStop actually was able to get themselves in a better position, and maybe maybe they can actually like they're not going to keep their stock up in in the two to three hundred dollar range. But like they might be able to keep it in like like the high tens, like in like that like fifty to a hundred range, and like maybe turn the company around a little bit. Because I know that um that Chewy guy apparently wants to make them into like a like a like a a, a force in like online real retailing for like the stuff that they sell. Yeah. Basically, the the same thing that he did with Chewy, mm-hmm. um, which like that would be cool. Like I don't hate GameStop so much that I want to see them go out of business. I just want to see them do business better. Yeah. 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 Um but yeah, there there's that. Um this is I'm just going to run over this thing real quick. Um Marvel announced that they're going to do a new Heroes Reborn arc. Um it is not a sequel to the one from the 90s. Um it is the 25th anniversary apparently of that one. Um in the 90s after like a big fight with Onslaught, um Franklin Richards put all the heroes into an an alternate reality where like everything was a little different. Like Tony Stark was like a teenager, I think. Like weird shit like that. It lasted for a little while and then went back to normal. Um, this new one is going to replace. Um, oh, and the original one replaced like the entire line of comics for Marvel for like however long of a period it lasted. Um, this new one is just going to replace the Avengers for however long it's scheduled to run. A few months. Um, Jason Aaron and Ed McGinnis, who are currently on Avengers, are the ones doing it. Um, it's going to be coming out of the current arc, which is like a shonen tournament arc. Of a bunch of heroes and villains fighting, being forced to fight each other, um, so the Phoenix can pick its next host. Um, and apparently that's gonna end with, like, the world being destroyed and reborn as, like, a different world where the Avengers never existed. So, um, the Squadron Supreme, which is literally Marvel's, um, like, answer to the Justice League, like, every member of the Squadron Supreme is, like, modeled off of a member of the Justice League in, like, some weird way. Mm -hmm. Um, they're, like, the predominant heroes of Earth. And only Blade, of all people, remember the original reality. Weird. Yeah. Um, Thor, in this new reality, Thor is an embittered alcoholic that's unworthy of Mjolnir. Um, Tony, Har- Tony Stark never created his armor. Captain America was never freed from the ice because there were no Avengers to find him. Um, and there's going to be, uh, like, villains all are all going to have different twists on them. So there's going to be a Dr. Juggernaut, which the image they released looks like Juggernaut, but in Dr. Doom's armor. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, there's going to be a Black Skull, which I don't know if that's some weird combination of, like, Black Panther and Red Skull, which seems fucked if it is. Um, Silver Witch, which, judging by the, the image they had there, looks like it's probably Wanda, but I'm not sure what's changed there. And then there's going to be a Thanos, who has Infinity Rings instead of a Gauntlet. Okay. <laughs> um, and then some of the other teaser images they had included, like, the Hulk looking kind of happy as he beats something. Um, not angry. Uh, Wolverine and Alpha Flight members. Um, what I think is Peter Parker on top of the Daily Bugle photographing like a hero flying away. Um, so a lot of characters still exist and a lot of characters still exist as some sort of like metahuman like character. But I guess like 
maybe the X-Men didn't exist the same way that they did, so Wolverine never left Canada. Mm-hmm. Because Alpha Flight's the Canadian superhero team. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm kind of interested. The, the Avengers run has been fine so far. Like, Jason Aaron is a really good writer. But, like, it's been one of those comic book runs where, like, it's very forgettable. Like, I couldn't tell you what, like, the previous arcs were. Unless I really sat down and thought about it long and hard. Yeah. I just know, like, I know that the one directly before the current one was a Moon Knight-centric thing, and now they're on this Phoenix thing. But, like, I don't remember what came before the Moon Knight stuff. Mm-hmm. So, but we'll see. Um, It's going to start in May, I believe, which, of course, I didn't write that down. But, yeah, I, I think it the, the whole thing starts in May. Um, The Avengers regular monthly book won't run for those months. Um, So, yeah, we'll see what that is when it starts. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, there's gonna be a, a, HBO Max is working on a live action Harry Potter series. Um, according to Variety, it's in very early development. Sure, you're excited for this, aren't you? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so War- so Warner Brothers and HBO Max are both denying that this project is in development. Um, Variety is reporting based on several sources telling them that it actually is in development. Um, there's no word on, like, a timeline or anything like that, but, like, I don't know about you guys, but... Like, there's not a whole lot else to tell about those particular characters if it is, like, a Harry Potter-centered thing that is probably going to be any sort of interesting. Yeah, I mean, unless it's, like, post-Harry Potter and just them living their lives, but that would be dumb. Like, it it, it might be just, like, a, quote, Harry Potter series because it takes place in a Harry Potter universe, but maybe it's a whole new story, a whole new original thing in that universe. Who knows? But so uh, let's look at look let's look at it this way. The 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 eight Harry Potter movies, like and Drew, I know you disagree because you just you don't like the like that stuff, but like they're a good story. Like I enjoy that that world and that story. Mm-hmm. The Fantastic Beast movies that take place in that same world are not good movies. They are pretty boring, even though they actually have a very strong cast. Yeah. Um but how were because I weren't those weren't they actually stories as well written, like or were they No, uh, so Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them what it so it's that is one of their school books in the mm-hmm. in the book series yeah, yeah. um jk rowling in the early 2000s wrote like that book as their school book for like charity okay. like you can go buy a book that is fantastic beasts and where to find them and like every page is like a different magical beast and like a bio on them basically okay. um the movies are its own thing like um the author of the book, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, like like the, the in-universe author, is the main character from yeah, the movies. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, the movies are just, like, made up bull- – I mean, everything's made up bullshit. But, like, yeah. yeah, they didn't exist before. I know Rowling was involved in writing the scripts. I don't know if she wrote them herself or, like, co-wrote them or consulted or whatnot. But, yeah. At- frankly, not many people like her right now. No. So- no. She is bad. She is yeah. the worst. She's uh-huh. ca- She's – she turned out to be a super shitty person for somebody that wrote books all about inclusivity. Uh, well, I uh, mean, when you go back and look at him, not all that inclusive. No, when I when, mean, I guess that's true. When, kind of a lot not? of shit talking on people that aren't the same as. Others. But you know what I mean? Like, like, like all the people that shit talk the most are always portrayed as the villains. Sure. Like, like the Slytherin were always portrayed as the villains, and they were the ones that were always calling people slurs and stuff like that. And then she's out here basically being Slytherin. Yeah, I mean, but she could have just written a book without, like, the whole, like, mudblood thing and shit like that. Like, they they could be villains, but not be prejudiced. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but... Look, man, you want to see Prejudice? Fucking watch The Boys Season 2. Holy shit. I, uh, gotta fucking watch that still. <laughs> that is that is on my list of things to watch. Uh, yeah, we just started it this week. We're like four or five episodes in, and there's one character who's just the fucking worst. Yeah, like, and she's like that, like smile at your face, racist. It's bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't think I really want this series to be honest. I mean, I yeah, like I enjoyed the movies. I've never read the books, but like I'm over Harry Potter. Like when they announced that open world Harry Potter game, I was like, eh, about it. And it's mostly because it's at fucking Hogwarts and there's a bigger universe out there that, like, that's what drives me nuts. Like, the same thing with Star Wars. Like, there's a large, expansive whole galaxy. Let's stop focusing on the Skywalker saga era. You know what, though? I think Hogwarts as a setting for a game 
outside of like the known characters makes sense because you've got there's a lot of biomes to that castle. Like you have the castle itself, you have the mountains nearby, the village nearby, the 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 forbidden forest and everything. And why not just do a castle that not a lot of people know where you can do whatever the fuck you want in it because it's a fantasy fucking magic world. Well, because then it wouldn't be Harry Potter. They would just be its own thing. In the Harry and Potter it's not... universe. It's still in that same universe. But that's not what anyone wants. They want to run around Hogwarts and be a wizard. I just want to be a wizard. I don't want to run around Hogwarts. I well, just want to be a wizard. You're fucking broken. No, I mean, I'd rather like, just... I have no interest in any other part of that universe. Like, if I'm playing a game, I'd rather be on at a place I know. Just without the characters that are kind of forced down your throats for 30 years. Yeah, I mean, that's that's where we'll, we'll disagree. Like I, I like if if you're if they're gonna build up this whole full world, use the whole full world. They started in 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 Fantastic Beasts, which, in my opinion, Fantastic Beasts was a good movie. It wasn't it wasn't shitty like the sequel was. Well, I was gonna say the the first one wasn't bad. Like the first one had its enjoyable moments. Except um, the it sequel been was so much more interesting. <laughs> no, exactly. Like I think that was the thing. Like it's called Fantastic Beasts, and really doesn't involve all that many beasts. Yeah, um, yeah. or where you found any of them. Yeah, exactly. Was, and oh, I already have all of these. Yeah, and the sequel is just straight garbage. Yeah, and I want to say yeah. there's like what, like two or three more that are supposed to be part of that series. <sighs> Something like that. I I wouldn't be surprised if they stop. Like I I don't know. WB they probably still make decent money on them. And they probably don't really spend a well. I mean, they they cost a lot to make, but they don't actually re, they they own the rights to it. So it's just like, yeah, whatever. This kind of prints money, I'm sure. Yeah, no, I mean, it definitely still does. Uh, you know, it doesn't just print money, but they keep making Tomb Raider movies. I I I mean, I never got to watch the most recent one yet, but I the, hear it was decent because I, I like the it. most recent one. Yeah. Um, we actually just watched it again a couple weeks ago because like Erica hadn't seen it. I'm like, I think you'll actually like this. Um, and she didn't dislike it. Um, but so they, they announced that the sequel that was actually supposed to start filming like last year, but COVID, Mm -hmm. um, uh, they announced a writer director in Misha Green, who she was, uh, one of the people behind HBO Max's Lovecraft Country. Which I hear is really good. Yeah. I've heard a bunch of good things about it. I know it's kind of got that like adventure looking for things vibe that like a Tomb Raider or like an Indiana Jones would have. Mm-hmm. So that's probably actually a really good fit for that world. Um, and I'm actually excited to see what they do because she's also the first woman to direct or write one of these movies um, that, you know, stars like a woman that's supposed to be out there adventuring. Yeah. So I mean, in- I'm interested for it. And hopefully, hopefully it hopefully it's better than the last one. Mm-hmm. Cause like, like I said, like I like the last one, but I'd rather the sequel be better. Yeah. Um, Before you go to the next thing, I saw this. Uh, I didn't know this was going to be one of the news things. I would have told you to add this other thing that I saw on Nerdist. Uh, Netflix is getting a Tomb Raider and a Skull Island, like Kong, King Kong, Skull Island uh, animated series. Um, oh, really? I didn't see that anywhere else. It's uh, it's just, uh, this is uh, today at uh, 9.30 this morning. And I haven't read huh. the, the whole article, but it's just Netflix is adding two big titles to its ever-growing library of anime originals. The streaming giant is teaming up with Legendary Telegi- Television for a new series based on Kong Skull Island. It's also partnering with Square Enix for an animated Tomb Raider show. Oh, that's kind of cool. It was reported at the Hollywood Reporter. I mean, that, and that's a reputable source, so... Yeah, yeah that, no, that's actually kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, the I'm sorry, uh, for Kong, Brian Duffield is the writer who he did The Babysitter. Okay. And, and Underwater. Um, Never saw that. And it's Powerhouse Animations, who uh, Castlevania and Blood of Zeus are doing the animation for that one. Uh, and then the article just talks a lot about Kong. Tomb Raider will be connected to the recently launched film franchise starring Alicia Vikander. Tasha Hugh, who did The Witcher, Blood Origin, and Red Sonia, will write and serve as executive producer. Founder and CEO of DJ2 Entertainment, Dimitri M. Johnson, did Sonic the Hedgehog, will also serve as executive producer. Uh, yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, ex- expanding those universes a little bit. Yeah, and it, it is the the anime is expanding the the movie and not the actual um games. Well, game or uh, I guess Skull Island's really the only thing that well, Kong has, right? I'm sorry, oh, that's right. We're talking about two things. The Tomb Raider anime is expanding the movies, the yeah. movie universe, not the game. 
Yeah, I wonder if it'll if it'll play as like a um like a transition between movies depending on when that comes out versus like the next movie. I'm sure it could. Yeah. Uh anyway, Drew, um y- you'll actually have some sort of input for this, I hope. Uh WWE is shutting down WWE Network and moving to Peacock in the US anyway. Yeah. Yeah, everywhere uh, else it'll stay its own independent platform. Yeah, that's a fucking wild ass move. <laughs> For Comcast to make. So, do you do you have the WWE, WWE Network? Or I think Sarah has been paying for a subscription for us for a few months. But you don't watch that too often anymore, right? Not really. Although Royal Rumble is on Sunday, which is the best pay per view of the year, so we'll watch that. We might be trying to figure out some way to virtually watch it with our friends that we would have gone over to their house to watch with, but COVID. Yeah. Um, yeah. Plus, plus you've got that new, um, OLED. Yeah. Like, why leave your house when you can watch it on that? Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, what was, uh, like a billion dollars or something? That I, d- is paying him? I didn't write that down. I just wrote down, like, the, like, the fact sheet on, like, what the move will actually entail. Yeah, it's just moving all the network over to under Peacock starting March 18th? Yeah, is March right? 18th. Um, if you're... If you're an existing subscriber, you'll have um you'll be transitioned to a Peacock Premium, which is four ninety nine a month. I have no idea what WWE Network costs usually. Do you nine ninety nine? Okay, so it's actually cheaper for the premium. Um, but because Peacock is a load of bullshit, Premium is actually the one that has ads um all the time. If you want no ads, you do have to pay the nine ninety nine for Peacock Premium Plus. Um, but I'm pretty sure Premium Plus also still has ads on some programming. Weird. Because as far as I remember when I was reading, like, all the different options for Peacock, like, last year, they did not actually have a fully ad-free option. Uh, I wonder if the things that has ads are the live shit. That's all. It might be, like, it might not necessarily be the, like, old WWE. Like, maybe WWE content is entirely ad-free. But I know there are some, there is some content on there that has ads still. I I don't like if if Comcast and and NBC are smart. Uh yeah, the 9.99 would be ad free er, like like everything that's not live. But I bet you they have ads on like fucking the office and and Parks and Rec because those are making them their money. Yeah, that's the only stuff people are watching on those platforms cuz I I signed up for the trial to watch the Psych movie and AP Bio, which is a a sitcom with one of the guys from Always Sunny. Mm-hmm. And Patton Oswalt. Yeah. Um, okay. There was no other good content on that platform at that point. No, it's like the only reason I would get it is for uh, the Office and Parks and Rec. But like, you know what? This make this gives me more of a reason to not get it is because fuck the WWE. Um. So he, I like this gives me more reason not to get Peacock as much as I want to watch the Office and and Parks and Rec. Well, so I'm Peacock does have a totally free option. That but you it, can watch it, things with ads just like regular television, but not everything. Like, like only, The Office might have not have every episode. It's like the only – oh, the first two seasons of The Office and probably – Oh, is first, that all? That's – like I was looking it up to see how much it costs and it was like, for example, if the free version, you can only watch the first two seasons of The Office. For this version, you can watch them all, but you've got ads. In this version, you can watch them all without ads or whatever. I – yeah, it's it's not it's not even worth going to do the free to watch. I'm not going to watch 20 30 38 episodes of The Office over and over and over. It's not worth it. I mean, you've watched 138 episodes over and over and over. So what's the difference? Uh th- those 38 episodes are some of the worst episodes of the series. No, I mean that's true. The first two seasons aren't great at that show. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just like well, Parks and Rec. See, like season... Parks and Rec didn't get good until the end of season two. Yeah. Season two, it, it's good. It's good. Like season one, there's only eight to 13 episodes and it sucks. Like, or not sucks, but it's just not as good as the rest of it. Yeah, no, I mean that it is the exact same thing as Parks and Rec. Like yeah. Parks and Rec season one is six episodes. They are bad episodes. Yeah. Season two is better, but it, it doesn't hit its stride until the end of season two, um, beginning of season three when, um, um, fuck, um, Ben and Chris show up. Yeah. But yeah, that I saw this news and I, I thought that was kind of wild that WWE was just fucking shuttering their shit down and just moving to Peacock. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a five-year deal worth a billion dollars over the five years? Jeez. That so, seems wild that it's only a five-year deal, 
just like I'm I'm sure at this point like they'll just sign another deal in five years because like to launch a, your own streaming platform again and try and get subscribers like that sounds like a fucking nightmare. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially like people like I don't know. I get the impression just from the few people I know on like Facebook that are into wrestling that like WWE does not have the viewership it used to have. Oh well, absolutely. Like I mean, like not even like I'm not even talking about like 20 years ago. I mean like five years ago. Yeah, no. It like it, it really. Okay, yeah. It seems like all the wrestling fans like the the one that um that uh what's his face is on Kenny Omega. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, uh, although I mean, even that like less people watch that than watch Raw still. Really? So yeah. So just uh, wrestling's kind of down across the board. Yeah, but I mean, literally, comparatively, literally everything is down rating wise. Like nothing is what it used to be. That's true. Mm-hmm. Though I I think Young Sheldon still makes all of the viewers. Got that premium uh spot that Thursdays at like eight, I'm sure, or something like that. Eight or eight thirty. Like it's in that spot where like it's late enough they can be a little edgy sometimes, but early enough that it can still be family friendly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's it, you've got that, that uh Big Bang um audience that's like, Oh, this is Big Bang, so I gotta watch it. Um yeah. Yeah, just but yeah, only like seven hundred thousand people watch AEW every week. Oh, granted, it's also up against WWE's NXT show at exactly the same time, and those two kind of fight out in that same 700 to 800,000 viewer range, where Raw still gets, like, over a million people watching every week. Okay. I mean, that's actually better than I thought. Yeah, but it's not, like, what it was. I, again, even five years ago, it was probably more like two to three million watching every week okay and then like the late 90s early 2000s was like six or seven and then so i guess you guys will have a uh a peacock subscription for at least a little while well i have comcast tv so i get it oh that's right you guys do have comcast yeah well that's cool so you'll actually be able to stop paying for wwe network entirely yeah and then still watch the uh the pay-per-views when they mm-hmm. happen yeah which do they still like is a pay-per-view still actually a pay-per-view? Like, can you still, like, rent that for, like, 30 bucks or whatever? I don't know. I think some of them are. Like, Royal Rumble might be, but I, I don't actually know. I actually feel like last year they started to do, or maybe it was 2019, they did some of them on actual pay-per-view again, but I, I don't know. I feel yeah, like they I, I had wasn't tried sure. to move them all to... Like, does the, does the other, what, what was it, a, AEW? That's the yeah. other one, right? Do they do pay-per-views? Yes. But they also like, only do, like, at least in their first year, they did pay-per-views. Last year, they did not. They just had everything. Uh, maybe they did do, like, one post-pandemic. Which is understandable. But, like, their plan is to do, like, four pay-per-views, not 14, like WWE got up to at one point. Jesus. I thought it was always just one a month. Uh, For a little bit, they had... Especially when they had done their first brand split and Raw and SmackDown had entirely owned rosters like they have again now. They would have a couple months where there would be a Raw-only pay-per-view and a SmackDown-only pay-per-view in the same month. Oh, that sounds stupid. And then also, like, they've had some, like, international shows. Like, they actually had a thing in India that they, or, I don't know if it was actually, they actually went to India for this, but they, or... They flew in a few Indian wrestlers and, like, had this special for India only or whatever that just happened yesterday, actually. So, like, those were in there as well, and they've gotten a little ridiculous. Yeah, no, that does seem just a little unnecessary. And it does not look like Royal Rumble is on, like, pay-per-view. Like, he- Okay, well, that's... I guess that answers that question, then. Um. So, um... Moving on from that, um, I watched two movies this week. Um, I don't have a ton to say about either of them. Um, I watched The Invisible Man that from last year. That looked um, really good. It was actually really good, and that's the problem. Like, I enjoyed it enough that, like, I don't want to say too much about it because it'll spoil it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, the general, the, the, the kind of, like, roundabout thing is this woman, she's in an abusive relationship, um, both physically and mentally abusive, um, with, like, a rich dude, like, crazy rich like 
lives on like a compound in the middle of nowhere rich um and has like security cameras and all sorts of stuff all over his home Mm -hmm. um and she basically has to drug him and run away at in the middle of the night (laughs) um and the movie is basically somebody is stalking her that nobody can see Mm -hmm. so and i mean like it's in the it's in the synopsis for it like the that boyfriend that was like abusive to her like killed himself so she thinks it's him like like a ghost or something or just he faked his death somehow and like no one believes her but like crazy shit is just following her around for the movie yeah um and i, I didn't expect like the twists that it had in it like the twists and turns but it, it was good it, it was good and it's worth watching and it is on hbo max if i remember correctly probably so worth checking out um it's got um Elizabeth Moss is the main character. She is the the main woman from uh um fuck what is that show The Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um and then I also watched Hal's Moving Castle, which is a Studio Ghibli movie. Um it's got Christian Bale as the voice of Hal. I've seen that like once or twice. Yeah, I saw it once 10 years ago, 15 years ago, something like that. Um it's a it's a good movie like I it's weird like like a lot of those, like, Studio Ghibli movies, it's not like there's a lot of action or anything in it or, like, a lot going on, but they're just super entertaining to watch. And, like, the little bit of, like, like suspense in them always feels like so much more than it actually is. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it's a fun movie. Erica had never seen it, and we were talking, and we, we want to try and – probably not quickly. Like, we're not going to do like you do with, like, Godzilla every week. We're going to try and watch, like, all of the, the Ghibli movies that we're interested in that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, if you've never seen Howl's Moving Castle, it is also on HBO Max, along with all of the other Studio Ghibli movies. Yes. And it, it's good. It's from 2004, so it's a little more a little more recent than the rest of them. Um, it involves, like, magic and a moving castle and um, a ball of fire that is voiced by Billy Crystal in English. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's a fun, interesting story. Sweet. Yeah. Um, and that brings us to Richie's Weekly Kaiju, Kaiju section, Kaiju. where you watched... You watched Return of Godzilla. Yeah, this week I watched Return of Godzilla. Uh, it is the first Blu-ray that I have bought myself in like four years. Um, because how much was it? It was like fifteen bucks. It wasn't a big deal. Okay, that's not bad. Um, and it's and it's a movie that I wanted to buy. If it was like if 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 Bailante was fifteen dollars, I would buy. It. But it's not. It's sixty. Um, it was it was good. It was interesting. Like we said before at the beginning of the show, at the top of the show. Um, they did reference, like, Godzilla attacked 30 years ago, and, like, one of the main characters hated Godzilla. It's like, uh, well, your parents died in Godzilla's attack 30 years ago. They kept referencing that basically Godzilla hadn't been around over, like, during those 30 years. Like, he had 20 years where he was active in the movies, but they only just kept saying that he attacked 30 years ago. That doesn't mean that, like we said, the show wasn't, the movie wasn't, like, continuity-wise, like... Godzilla stopped attacking, honestly, really early on. It was, uh, he attacked Tokyo in, in, in Godzilla, and then Godzilla raids again. He shows up in Tokyo to fight Angurius and then leaves. So, uh, I was basing that continuity thing off of Wikipedia, which obviously mm-hmm. is, like, fan run. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't on the movie, it was on the era. Like, like yeah. what did, you, did you say that was, like, the Hisei era or the Showa era or something like that? Yeah, the new one is the Showa era. So, like, I was reading, the, like, the Wikipedia entry for that, where it said that entry picks up as a direct sequel to the original Godzilla, never references anything that has happened in the 30 years between 54 and this one. Yeah. Um, And then every movie after that is produced as an actual sequel to the last one so like the yeah. one after this one is actually has ties back to this one yeah yeah which um it, which is like it's cool that they like they're keeping it all connected in the series um the suit like godzilla himself looked really awesome out of curiosity uh, i have two quick questions for you uh-huh um how long have the movies been in color uh since um since kong kong versus godzilla was the first color so, okay, uh, for some was, reason, I thought that one would have been black and white, too. It's 1962 but. is their first color movie. Okay, so yeah. it's been, it has been a while. Yes. Um, And then the other question, and it's kind of like for both of you, is it fucking staggering that 1984 is 30 years before fucking 1950s? Like, that messes with my head for some reason. <laughs> like, I know that's just math, and that's how time works. 
But like to think that like the year I was born, 30 years prior to that was like the end of the Korean War. Yeah. Yeah. And 10 years prior to that, we dropped bombs in Japan. Yeah. Like, like it's just it's fucking weird. It's it. And that's like the crazy thing about like rewatching, especially the older ones, Godzilla and Godzilla Raids again, both like they constantly reference the atomic bomb. And, like, they dropped, and where you were, and things like that. And it's just, it, it blows, it blew my mind. I was like, holy shit, like, obviously these films were made as a reference to the atomic bombs and how destructive they are. But it's also, like, like I I was, I, I didn't live during then, so I didn't know, like, like, I knew it was a travesty, but it was just, like, it's something just in the past. Like, it, like, affects you, and you think about it, and I'm like, holy shit, these people are ten years out from the atomic bolt last. Like, mm-hmm. and it, it kind of blows your mind. Um, and in, uh, the return of Godzilla, it, they, they do, I don't know, maybe there was like some sort of like weapons war door in 84 with, with nuclear, I mean, yeah, it was a cold war, right? During the eighties. Um, uh, would have been like the tail end of the cold war, but yeah. So, uh, the main thing of, of this one was that, um, Godzilla awakens somehow just Godzilla, uh, a, an island, a, a volcanic island erupts which awakens Godzilla. He then destroys a boat and then destroys a Soviet sub, nuclear sub, because he has the ability to key into nuclear power and nuclear um, waste, essentially. So he, he, like, he homes in on this Soviet nuclear sub. And then the entire movie, from that point on, is basically Japan being the median, the middleman, and, and trying to figure out, uh, like, who destroyed this sub? Was it the United States? Or was it Godzilla? Which they was like, uh, it wasn't the United States, it was Godzilla. And then they were like, well, what do we do? We don't use nukes. And Japan's like, we don't nu- use nukes. And Japan, or uh, the Soviets and the United States are like, we should use nukes. It's the most powerful thing we can have. And we'll limit its radius. And it, like at one point they were like, it's going to be a quarter of the power of the bomb that hit Hiroshima. And I was just like, holy shit. Like... That's just mind blowing, um, and uh, like God, but Godzilla is attacking in this one, and he's like he is not fighting anything. Like when I mentioned the the giant sea lice, yeah, I thought like this was supposed to be something bigger. Like it was essentially it was a a it was the size of a human, but it had eaten on the radiation on Godzilla for so long, which made it grow. Um, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, the the story itself, like I said, it was all about like settling the focus in the the Cold War and stopping nuclear threats. Uh, that's what they're trying to push for because a lot of these Godzilla movies, and I've said it a few times, have like a back end story of like save the planet or stop this or stop that. Like they're they're all about giant monsters, but it's like what is what are what are the creators trying to say? And this one was like. Stop it with the fucking nukes, essentially, is what they were trying to say. Um, they, <laughs> if you get a chance, what is it called? Uh, I can't remember what the ship is called, Nick. But they, they end up actually almost killing Godzilla with a, uh, experimental, the Super X. It's called the Super X. And what it is, is it's a, an airship that, like, it, it that basically hovers in the air. And, uh, had, they had cadmium shells that fired right into Godzilla, which actually made him vomit, but cadmium absorbs radiation. Um, and, like, they, they actually basically almost killed Godzilla. Uh, but then he just, uh, uh, what happened? Uh, they, they found a, he, they knocked him out, but one of the, uh, one of the scientists early on was like, Godzilla is immortal, he'll come back, he's, he's never gonna die. So instead, they they created a sound wave that attracts him using birds to pull him and make him fall into a volcano. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they stopped Godzilla. So, like, they had this awesome ship. Just look up the Super X and Godzilla. The ship looks ridiculous, but it also looks really awesome. I mean, it's an 80s ship, so, like, they kind of always walk that line. Yeah. Um, and and th- overall, like, this was, this was a good movie. It was a fun film. Uh, like I said, Godzilla looked awesome in this one. Compared to how he was in the last couple of, of, of movies in the Showa era, like, the suit and everything looked so cool. He looked more menacing. He looked more, like, like, animal and wolf-like and, and, and lizard-like at the same time. Like, he actually, like, 
they had he had movement in his snout, whereas before it was always just his mouth would open and close. Now, like if he would snarl, his lips would move up and down and things like that. Um, they did limit his hand movement a bit, whereas like nearing the end of the show era, he was just like full on moving his arms all over. Whereas this was more like T Rex like, where like they were closer to him. But he also didn't fight anything. He just like destroyed things. Um, and I also want to say that it's not Godzilla's fault he destroyed things. The humans started attacking him first. Like the first building, he like he destroys the ship because it has nuclear uh nu- nu- uh nuclear power in it, and he attacks a nuclear power plant to eat the nukes. Those are what he destroyed. But when he goes into Tokyo, the first thing he destroys is he steps. And the the ground caves because of, like, the, I guess they're, they're, like, it was just weak or the sewer system or whatever underneath it. The ground caves and he falls into a building and accidentally hits the building. He did not destroy that on purpose. He did not go there to destroy. He just went there. And then humans started attacking, which caused him to fight back. Did you know in Tokyo there's a Godzilla hotel that actually has, like, a Godzi- like a giant Godzilla model on the side of it? Yeah. Yeah, I want to I wanna go to that so bad. Yeah, we saw it while we were there. It's really cool. Yeah. I um there's also I think it's in Tokyo. It might not be in Tokyo. There's um a uh Gundam, like a giant life-size Gundam. There there's multiple. So one of them is in Odaiba, which is like a district of Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Um it's a man-made island that you take like a train to. Yeah. Um and it's the right now I think it's the Unicorn Gundam. Um uh, it's really cool though. It, it and it is like, life-size. It's it's animatronic though too. It moves and stuff. So that's a different one. That one's yeah. not in Tokyo. That yeah. one is in another city. And yeah, that one's awesome. Like I've seen that on like on like Facebook and stuff where like it'll move its legs and arms and everything. Yeah. Uh but yeah, Return of Godzilla. It was a it was a decent movie. It was a good nineteen eighty four movie. Um Better or worse than Back to the Future? Um personal Actually, preference. I'm sorry, Back to the Future was nineteen eighty five. We can't do this. Uh yeah. I mean personal preference I would go for Godzilla, but like both uh, they're both good movies. But I personally would prefer Godzilla over back. Um, I can't trust your opinion ever again. I mean, you don't like Godzilla, so I can't trust your opinion ever again. I think there are more people that don't like Godzilla than don't like Back to the Future. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying I don't like Back to the Future. <laughs> I'm just saying I prefer Godzilla first. Yeah, and that, that's that's the wrong opinion to have. I disagree. Um, um, but my so... next my next movie is Godzilla vs. Bailante. We found uh we found it on the Internet Archive. So I'm going to try to watch that this weekend. And if it doesn't right, really... Right, that was... We talked about that last week. Yeah. If it doesn't really work out, then I'll watch uh, the next one after that, which is Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, um, which is on Apple, but I also have a link to it that it's on YouTube, so i probably just try to watch it there first. Okay. Um, To go along with the Godzilla stuff, um, they released a trailer for Godzilla vs. Kong mm-hmm. this week. Um, I It was a pretty cool-looking trailer. It, it, it looks really cool. Uh... It, it gives me, <laughs> flashes back a lot to Kong vs. Godzilla because the like the reason they got Kong in the original Kong vs. Godzilla was because they need they a a television producer wanted his own giant monster and then they wanted to use it to fight Godzilla. <laughs> so yeah. with look, with, man, you don't fix what ain't broken. So I doubt they're going with the television producer wants his own giant monster aspect, but. Getting him to fight potentially, as far as we've seen in this trailer, fight Godzilla. It's it's like it's re- very reminiscent of that because that wasn't that good of a movie anyway. So it's kind of weird to like call back to it. Yeah, um, I did see a thing online that King Kong since 1973. So um, Kong Skull Island Island took place in 1973. Mm-hmm. So in this universe, from 1973 to 2021, Kong has grown like 200 feet. Yeah, <laughs> because he was like a hundred and three feet or something like that in Skull Island. Yeah, and now he is equal height to Godzilla. Yeah, so in in Skull Island, um, they they basically said that he was the child of two Kongs, and so he was small. Yeah, he was like an adolescent, and I think yeah. it's been. I mean, it's been several years since I saw Skull Island, but I think at one point they find the skull of a larger one and realize yeah. how much bigger they get. Yeah, one maybe one maybe two. I'm not really too sure. I, yeah. I do remember it's seeing been a, while. a skeleton of one. Um, but yeah, so like they, I I figured he would grow. Um, but like this is the biggest 
Kong has ever been. This is also, from what I've read, the biggest Godzilla's ever been as well. Um, okay. Yeah, Godzilla has always, like, grown and shrank throughout the years. But, like, this is by far the largest because buildings are bigger now. So to make him menacing, you need to make him bigger. That's what I was going to say. Like, because buildings have gotten so much yeah. larger, you, like, the, the monsters, if they're supposed to be wrecking cities, have to you know scale yeah. to that which is funny because like king kong wasn't really supposed to be wrecking a city he like he wasn't never really that big like he was able to scale the empire state building whereas now he's like i don't know almost the same height as the empire state building i mean his hands should have been the size of a person yeah. because he was able to pick up the woman yeah and now he's like three times that almost yeah yeah like i feel like like skull island kong is like the size of kong from like the original movie and then yeah, now now he is three times that size. Yeah. Um. But uh, after they released the trailer, like a day later, they then delayed the movie a week yeah. to March um thirty first. Yes. Which is still better than the May release date it originally had. Um. We were talking in like the chat. I guess that was yesterday. Um. And I mentioned it seemed like a like a pretty fair move to make for um getting kind of like a big boost at the beginning of q2 um because everything else from early april moved release dates like to like later in the year so there's really no competition the first weekend of april mm -hmm. so by having this release at the the end of march and have it's like opening weekend really be the first weekend of april yeah um it's going to have better chances of like having like a big box off like quote unquote box office take mm -hmm. like yeah like the the actual box off box office revenue is probably not going to be anything special but since it's also releasing on hbo max they factor all that into that call into that price too mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah i i will because of this one week delay originally the movie was supposed to come out in may which i would have ended my marathon uh with all of them prior to these even including 98 godzilla prior to 2014's godzilla i would have them all done before Godzilla vs. Kong came out, and I would have just watched all three in the same week. Uh, now, because of the delay, uh, I will have watched everything, including Godzilla 98, because it comes out before 1999, uh, everything through to Godzilla vs. Mechagirus, which comes out in 2000. I will have one, two, three, four, eight movies left in the film franchise, in the full-on Godzilla franchise, uh, when this movie comes out. I mean, that's actually... It's eight, kind of impressive when you think about it. Eight out of thirty-six. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's not bad. No, um, I have been seeing like a lot more of like theories because no one really knows who the villain is and stuff in 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 Godzilla vs Kong. Um, I'm still I'm still all about it being Mecha King Ghidorah based on what happens at the end of Godzilla vs Godzilla uh, King of Monsters. But there are people saying that it's potentially Mecha Godzilla. And they think that the Godzilla that Kong is fighting in the uh, ship scene during the trailer is actually Mecha Godzilla. Yeah, like I, I've seen that. I, I saw that there was like like some outlet posted like a screenshot of like a shadow that looks like a robot. Maybe it it was uh, I think it was IGN, and I saw the picture when they're running down into the um into the the the, the subway system in one of the cities. In the background, you can see red, and they're like, "That's eyes. That's Mecha Godzilla." Newsflash, Mechagodzilla's eyes are yellow, so shut the fuck up, man. I mean, 30 years ago, but... I think... I I, I, I will double-check um, in Godzilla against Mechagodzilla from 20, 2002. Uh, his eyes are still yellow. Okay, so 20 years ago. Um, And so I'm assuming... Uh, nope, he is not in Godzilla Final Wars. Tokyo SOS, his ye eyes are still yellow, which that was uh, 2003. Also, so. keep in mind, this is Hollywood. Hollywood changes things. Man, they they can't they can't they can't change his eye color. It's an iconic yellow eye color. It has to be. I yellow. didn't know his eyes were yellow. I've seen Mecha Godzilla on things for ages. I had no idea his eyes were yellow. Oh, I mean, they've in in all the movies they're yellow. Can't well, not anymore. Now they're red. They they shouldn't they shouldn't be. Nope. That and honestly, from 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 what I hear, this movie is actually going to be a reboot of Godzilla '98. Please no. Yeah, like, they're bringing back Matthew Broderick, they're bringing back John Reno. No, just, no. Um, <laughs> they're going to incorporate things from the animated series with um, Heat, I think is what the, the thing was called. So, Mecha King Ghidorah, he has two blue eyes, but a red gem on his forehead, so. 
Oh, so there is actually a Mecha Ghidorah. So yeah, in in the um in Godzilla vs King Ghidorah in ninety one, Godzilla kills King Ghidorah, and then they build Mecha King Ghidorah to fight Godzilla. Who does? Just people. People, because this is one of the films that he is just attacking, and Godzilla is like kind of the villain, but also at the same time, like I guess maybe Ghidorah was the villain. But then, uh, I've read up a little bit on it, but like, Godzilla, Ghidorah was the villain, Godzilla kills it, but then continues destroying the, the town or whatever, so then they build Mecha King Ghidorah and fight him or something. I don't, I don't really know, I've never seen it, and that's two weeks from now when I talk about it. Oh, well, I guess we'll, we'll find out, out about it soonish. Yeah. Yes. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up? Nope. Nope, that's about it. Cool. Well, in that case, that'll, that'll be the show for this week. If you'd like to find more of our content, head over to www.one-quest.com. You can also help us out by supporting us at patreon.com slash onequest. If you can't support us there with your dollars, you can head over to your favorite podcast platform. Support us there by liking, rating, reviewing, subscribing, all that fun stuff. We're on Apple Music or Apple Podcasts, I'm sorry. Uh, Google Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Music, all the popular platforms. Uh, you can also find us on social media, facebook.com slash one quest online or at one underscore quest on Instagram and Twitter. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash one quest video. And you can send us emails to social at one dash quest dot com. Otherwise, we'll be, ba- we'll be back next week with something else to talk about. Thanks for listening. Bye. 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 Bye.